Guess who's back? Back again. Back again. Shady's, Shady's back. back. What's up, Phil? I am so happy. I am so happy that you're back. I really am. I really, I really am. Did you, you know really why? miss me? So I could stop seeing fucking photos of all the Greek food that you're eating over there. That's really why. It was. Uh, That's the only reason why. <laughs> it was good. Let me make sure everybody can hear you. Bill says everything <laughs> is good, which is surprising. Uh, it really is. I'm gonna. St- I'm just gonna start you off with this right here. Just, to, just you know. Oh, hold on. Let me fix this real quick. Show me I that. Go here. I gotta go here. Uh, configure. That will be screen one. Oh nope. That's not it. There we go. Oh, nope. Here we go. Here we go. Oh boy. I got the wrong screen. Hold on. Configure. Oh, he's back. He's, he's back. Screen one. one. I got too many screens on. Oh god. All right. There you go. All right. How? Look at that. Look at that. Look at that octopus. Uh, you know what? That, actually, that does nothing to me for me. You know why? Why? Because I had it several times while you were gone. Uh, okay. The neighbor. <laughs> okay. But I mean, okay. All right. Yeah. That's good. This is eggplant and zucchini fried with yeah. tzatziki right. sauce. Yeah, that looks good. Calamari. Oh, man. I'm wishing for a really, really good yeah. plate. Calamari. Or should I really say calamar? Calamar. 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 This is sardella, a little fish um, um, pan fried, and then mar- uh-huh. oh my god, it was I so good. With you. Mm-hmm. Salad. I mean, you know, I, it was. Uh, it, I, I gained about fifteen pounds, but uh, you did kinda. Uh, yeah, I did. I did. Well, mm-hmm. to be to be fair, I've gained since my accident because I kind of used it as an excuse. Oh, I can't work out, or I can't do anything, so I've been eating like a pig. But uh, that comes to a stop this week uh, as I get back on the train because uh, you know I can't I can't I can't I can't do it anymore. You know a couple other things too. Um, Larry wanted to know if we we're having a show. If he would get a, uh, a Facebook account, he would know. Maybe maybe right? we maybe we send uh, we send a, a carrier pigeon to his house. I, mean, I have to you, you like I know you <laughs> joke about me all the time, right? He he's he's worse though. He's very handy. Uh, very, he he put a whole new floor. In two of his bedrooms. Yeah. Uh, F- Phil's lighting is better than Demi's. Uh, okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, well, I very, uh, I you very can, rarely hear that, so yeah, thank you. you can, thank you very you much. You can super chat some money, and I can buy some lighting to improve <laughs> the show. There you go. There's an idea for you. Um, and, and by the way, there's something on your, your Facebook page. Yeah. And if I don't scroll down enough, I, I get a glimpse of it, and I wonder what it is. Well, because it doesn't look very good. 
So if I go here, right? Okay, hold on. Let me put you on the big screen. Hold on. Okay. Right. It, it, like if you and if you look at this really quick, it, it doesn't look good until you realize that it's a drink, right? Oh, yeah, you, yeah, it does not. You look see what I'm saying? Yes, if you don't yes. scroll down enough, I'm I like, mean, what, what is that? You have to that have a pervert. Right. You, have to, you, it's a you have to have a per see? perverted mind to to you know, to, 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 <laughs> to see that. But I took uh, uh, I took uh, I took Lena to um, Carabas today. And yes. uh, and we had uh, dinner and because uh, you know Connie's in Greece, so I'm here and and Maria has a camp, so it's just me and Lena. So I I just had a, I was in the mood for a sangria for some reason, so I ordered a sangria. It was delicious, and uh, it turned out to be looking like a penis. It, it, it kind of looks like a penis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, but other than that, um, I went. I went to else too. Yeah, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Something else. I would like to show uh, everybody what I'm vaping tonight. Okay. That is. This is what I'm vaping. I'll, I'll go ahead and vape it for everybody. <laughs> I like how. I like how. Me and you have been like very, very careful about showing this thing. <laughs> We're the only ones on the planet who haven't shown this device yet. And we haven't shown it yet. And we uh, won't until the tenth. <laughs> not until the tenth. You can find photos all there over the whoa, place. Whoa! There you go. Whoa! But we're not going to show it until <laughs> yeah. the tenth. So but anyway, my hand. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, after we figure out if vaping is dead or not, because we have to, we have to decide if. Uh, well, it's it, it's got to be dead because that guy said it was dead on my Facebook page. Yeah, yeah, that's what triggered this entire show, and it's a little bit, it's a little bit click uh, baitish, uh, but wow. uh, it does have a little bit of. Uh, uh, if you look here on Phil's Facebook, he posted the uh, video announcing the Z80 launch, and then the first comment below it is "Vaping is dead." Look at that. Look at from that. Christian Oleg, and you know, I, I mean, I have, I have a, a few things to say here, but number one, like, if somebody follows Phil or me for vaping, like, that's how you met us. You found us on social media. You found our <laughs> YouTube channel. You know, we helped you quit smoking, whatever. And then you follow us for vape stuff, and then we put, and then we post vape stuff, and you're not interested in vape. Why not? Why are you following us? Why don't you just unfollow, unfriend? Or go jump in a lake. I mean, you can do all three of those combined if you want to. It just doesn't make it. Why would somebody put a comment like that? Um, this is what triggered the show, obviously. It's a little bit clickbaitish, But uh, uh, social media has a huge, huge impact on people, especially now with a, with a pandemic feel. Like they're stuck at home. And I guess everybody wants to, you know, throw their two words in there. But when it comes to people like me and Phil, you know, it's a little bit... Uh, it's more than offensive in a way that, you know, I'm not saying it's racist, that kind of offensive. It's more offensive of the work that me and Phil have put in the vaping industry for the last, you know, 10 years. And if you're not interested on it, all you have to do is just move along. Just just get off the page. Go look at Delta 8 Facebook pages or CBD Flower. I don't know. Or, you know, what, whatever you're interested. I would like to sing a song now. Go ahead. Move, bitch! Get out the way! Get out the way! There, that's what I think, right? But you know, yeah. th but this is this is the state. This this is the times. This is a sign of the times. Internet yeah. has made every turned everybody into. Uh, it's given them all. What, what did we used to call it? Um, alcohol uh, muscles. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alcohol. You muscles. know what I mean? That's, that, that's really what the internet has done. Because you can say something offensive to somebody, and back in the day, the only way to do that was to do that to that person's face, and then potentially you got a smack in the face, right, or a punch, right? But now, now you can just do whatever you want, right? Say whatever you want. It's Ridiculous. crazy, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. Everybody, everybody thinks that that I don't know. I mean, look, I'll take constructive criticism. I'll take if somebody wants to put an idea out there, whether it's good or bad. Somebody commented on your on your about the Z calls, which you know, I mean, we sell thousands and thousands. People enjoy Z calls all the time, and that's you know, that's they don't like it. That's fine. If 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 you don't like the product and you're using another product to quit smoking, whatever that is, uh, good for you. You know, we'll take a circuit criticism, but if you're going to be rude, if you want to be an asshole about it, move along. Ain't nobody got time for that. It, it, I, so the the post that he's talking about, if if, if I I knew, I would have would have pulled it up. But um, we posted some information about the uh, the, the Zenith two that we're both really excited about. That's coming. Uh, we're going to actually do a, a live on uh, with the, an Anakin show on uh, the tenth, just in a couple of days now, right? Yeah. And so I posted it, and this, the guy's done it twice, right? Where what he's posted underneath the Zenith, it, the Zenith 2 postings that I'm doing, it, is um, I'd buy it if you would release a real MTL coil. 
Right. Now look, right? And he's like, uh, I wasn't trolling. No, fuck you. Yeah, you were. That's that's a troll. Yeah. If the, if that's what you're going to put under a tank that's designed to be a quality mouth to lung tank that literally we've sold millions of these tanks, right? You know, Dimitri said we've sold thousands of coils. No, we've sold millions of coils. People are enjoying it, right? If you use something else, if you're happy with that, uh, and it's a competitive, it's a competitor to us, right? And you're not smoking. I don't care. I think, I think that's a great product. I think that's a great product. Um, but to just to do something like that, so I mean, I I said, look, do you want to have an intelligent conversation about what you're saying, or do you just want to be a troll and put that there, right? And you know, he came back and he said, you know, I'm not trolling. About. Yeah, you are with, with a ridiculous comment like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you are. And, and so I tried to have an intelligent conversation with it's, him, it's and right. I told him if you want to talk more. We'll take it off. <laughs> I ain't got time for that. I ain't got. You know what I tell him. Uh, but, I know, uh, I, but, you, no, you don't tell him anything. You just click, click, ban. Maybe he's been watching ban, ban, Grim ban. Grin videos. You know. But but anyway, the uh, the, uh, <laughs> the point that I want to make is this is what triggered this entire show. And, and 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 to be fair, it's been it's been again rough rough week for the vaping industry. We had just this past week the USVA lawsuit. Uh, the Supreme Court ruled it's not going to take up this case. Um, so I think now we only have the Pacific Legal Foundation uh, lawsuit that's still out there. I mean, and 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 when I posted that, a lot of people took that. This is this is how this industry this industry always tries to blame somebody, right? So because in the ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court, it says that the administration was telling the Supreme Court not to take this case. Immediately they said Biden wants to ban vaping. <laughs> like, like like that's immediately that's the first thing people thought about. They didn't think about, of course, any administration wouldn't want the Supreme Court to take this case because it has, I mean, it has to do with vaping, but it also has to do with the way the federal government and these agencies work. I mean, we're talking about changing the entire structure of how these agencies, no administration wants to do that. No government would want to do that. It has nothing to do with Democrats or Republicans. But that was bad news. Uh, so uh, obviously um, today I, I informed a few, but... Uh, uh, the FDA sent out another 16 uh, warning letters and uh, to, v to vape companies selling uh, products that are illegal or, or considered adultered in, in, uh, in the United States. Uh, and uh, we, I looked at the uh, Vaping 360 and it said, Phil, that in these, just in these 16 letters that went out today, uh, the products listing that these companies have totaled to about 360,000 SKUs. 360,000 products between the, just these 16 companies. Okay. So let's say that these 16 companies get this letter and decide tomorrow, well, I don't want to fight the FDA. I'm closing down. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm making an assumption. Right. Um, 360,000 products are off the market. They're done. Well, I mean, on the, the legal market, <laughs> maybe they're still on the black market, but they're done. They're out of the market. Um, if we get 16 letters a month, which has been kind of the progression, 16 letters every 45 days, what the FDA is doing, on average, uh, I mean, in, in a year's time, you can have three, four million products that are off the market. So, yeah, I, you, all this is stuff for concern for the vaping industry, and hence what the title of the of the show today, uh, Phil. Well, you know, look, uh, vaping is not dead. Uh, I don't think it, it ever will be dead in the United States. It, it just becomes a challenge, and it becomes not as fun as it was. Yes. And I, I think part of that fun really was part of what converted a whole lot of smokers over to vaping. Right. Um, but like, like what you say all the time is it's going to become like, you know, just the, just another chore. Like you, you went to the C store to buy your cigarettes, you know, now you're going to go to the C store to buy your disposable or to buy your jewel. And is that, is that fun anymore? Or is it just a task? Is it enjoyable anymore? Or is it just something that you have to do? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. And you know, th th this interests me too. The disposable market. Yeah. Right. Killing why, it. Why losing their minds over the disposable market. I don't understand this. Right. I, I I'm not, I'm not an environmentalist. I'm not a save the planet kind of guy. Right. But with those disposables, every time you throw one away, you're throwing away plastic, you're throwing away electronics, you're throwing away a battery. How come people aren't losing their minds over that? I th I'll give you the answer, the short answer. Um, I, I think with the COVID, 
and the lockdowns and all that, it hasn't come out yet. I think come fall, <laughs> come the new school season, oh, oh boy, yeah. oh boy, the pave moms are going to have a conniption over this thing. <laughs> Campaign for tobacco-free kids is going to go off the deep end. Once they start seeing them in schools, once they start seeing them in the trash and, and kids throwing them all over the place, I think the lockdown benefited that we we're not seeing the outrage yet. Number one. And I think number two, I mean, these, these products are very, very popular. I, I mean, a lot of people are using them. So uh, I think that um, uh, it hasn't gotten to the point where it's drawn so much attention. But I think that come fall, they're going to be under a lot of scrutiny as well, too. And, you know, to be fair, again, I, I, the environmental is, you know, part of doing a PMTA feel uh, is to do an environmental assessment of your product believe it or not, which is a pain in the ass, right? We had to do right. it for all these, these, these companies. But what an environmental assessment does is you have to submit to the FDA, not just today, but what you project in five years will be your hurt on the environment through boxes, plastic, caps, nicotine disposal, stuff, stuff like that. So you can imagine a company that makes a disposable submitting a, uh, a disposable battery to the FDA has to have, and none of them do. I, I would be if I would if I would start a disposable company tomorrow, and I might. Who cares? I mean, everybody else is doing it. Um, but if I was going to start a disposable company tomorrow, what I would do is I would implement a recycling product. So I would say I'm selling my battery for ten dollars, and it has you know nineteen thousand puffs or whatever the hype currently is. I don't know. I don't know what count we're up now, but I saw I saw a disposable with ten and a half mils of liquid the other day coming from China. Yeah. And well, the new disposables, you, you, you don't throw them away. <laughs> they just vape forever. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. This disposable fuel has a 550 milliamp hour battery in it. I joke you not. It's, it's disposable. It's disposable. It looks like a mod. It's a one-time thing. 550 mod, 10 and a half mils. But anyway. If but you I buy 10 of those, <laughs> you could run a Tesla off of them. I just to let you know. <laughs> so, so I, 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 I'm, what, I'm, what I would do is I would say, okay, this is my product. It's $10, whatever. Bring it back, collect them at the point of sale, and then get $2 off your next one. Right, and, and and try to implement some kind of a recycling program, and that gives a uh, gives something to the customer, and then you know you you can take these batteries and recycle more. That's what I would do, but I mean this is a cash grab. Nobody really cares, Phil. They're just putting this product out, and it's done. Nope. All right, let me answer just a couple of questions. Uh, Neil Pitts, can I get a loose MTL with Aries two twenty two millimeters? Yes, you can get a loose MTL. Uh, the Aries has uh, a slot. And it has holes as well, too. So if you open up the entire slot, you can get a loose MTL. If you want a really loose MTL, I would get the Aries 1. <laughs> so, but, uh, but the Aries 2, you definitely can get a loose MTL. It's designed for the full range of MTL, okay? You agree, Phil? You're the, I agree. You're the I agree. Actually, the, the Aries 2, uh, we made it tighter because compl people complained that the Aries 1 wasn't tight enough, right? right? Correct, correct. So uh, if you do want looser... That they get Aries one, right? And you probably get a good deal on an Aries one out there somewhere right now. Too, so, correct. Uh, here's an interesting uh, uh, comment on a, a Netflix series called Sweet Tooth. A guy gets killed, hit by a car while fighting over his jewel. The guy who took it said, You don't know what's in those things. Uh, the show is about a pandemic killing the population, and vaping is still that dangerous thing. Uh, great segue into what I wanted to show. And this is, of course, in your hometown state, Phil. I know. So, so, I disappointed. Can't, uh, so disappointed. I, I saw this. I got so angry. I mean, I so this is this is in the airport. I think, if I'm not mistaken, somebody sent me this picture. This is not. This is. I didn't take this picture, but it says vaping is as safe as skydiving without a parachute. To learn the truth about vaping, visit vapefatsnewjersey.com uh, in New Jersey. And if if you if you want to say that there's any that vaping is dying, feel I think it's the fact that any person agency nonprofit can post that publicly and not be challenged i think if anything is killing vaping it's that i mean, a right. flat out i mean they they should be sued but you know who's going to sue you know everybody's selling delta 8 now but but if if there's one reason why vaping is dying i think that that's that's a huge part of it 
you know, w- when I see that, it it, it's, uh, it it just reminds me of all the nonsense and craziness that's going on, like on, on Facebook and on Twitter. And if you type the wrong thing or, or if you, you post fake news that, that you get attacked and you get banned and everything, that is fake news. I mean, it's just fa- OK. So if that was the truth, I quit smoking back in 2009 with vaping. I should have been dead on day one because vaping is as dangerous as jumping out of an airplane without a parachute. Yeah. Which is bullshit. Bull. It's complete yeah. bullshit. Yeah. And yet you can you can post that. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it just it, it, that drives me crazy. I like sometimes I wish I would win the lotto just to just just to sue somebody like that. Yeah. yeah. Because it takes a lot of money to sue. If I right? if I had a few million laying around, I would definitely take a legal challenge somewhere. And not only just for the legal challenge, but I would also hire a PR firm because you know. I, you know, I've been watching like crime documentaries and, you know, for, forever, you know, it's just, it's, it's a thing that I do. I love crime documentaries. But the other day I saw, uh, the, the story of, uh, Gloria Aldred, the, the attorney that, you know, she goes, she goes over the sexual harassment suits and all that. She's been around for years. What these attorneys do, if you hire them in a high profile case field is when they're defending somebody, they also hire a PR firm to get out there and put positive stories. Woody Allen did the same thing, by the way, Woody Allen that was accused of molesting his daughter, hired PR firms, and those PR firms are very, very influential, a lot of money. So what they're doing is they're they're trying to protect Woody Allen's name. They would put out good stories about Woody Allen and then bash his ex-wife, Mia Farrow. And at the same time, they would blackmail people that would come and ask questions and say, well, we're not going to invite you to this event. You're not going to have access to these stars if you publish something bad. So that's what I would do. I would hire a firm, make a lawsuit, at the same time hire a PR firm to get out there and push positive stories about vaping. And, you know, you'd get at least something done. You'd get some traction. You'd get some positive PR. You'd get some invitations, you know, on some news channels to speak. And I, and I think that's, that's what we should have done. Yeah, we don't have any positive news, any positive promotion, any positive anything really. Yeah, you're here right. in the states. We have Enough. tons of positive stuff, but only it me, doesn't... you, and Grim Green see it. <laughs> that's it. Right. We share it, it, it. We we share it in this this bubble of vaping, you know. And and I think that's a huge problem. There's tons. Just just today, again, I don't know. I don't know how some people don't pick up on this stuff right here. But just today. Um, there was a letter sent from the Small Business Administration to the FDA. Uh, this was sent today. And in this letter, it's asking the FDA, uh, it's saying that uh, there are su- uh, uh, timely submitted PMTAs from millions of products for the FDA to review, and the agency only has until September 9th of 2021. 2020, this, don't forget, was court ordered, right? Judge Grimm ordered the FDA, get them by September 9th, 2021, uh, 2020, and then review them in a year, right? So they're asking uh, the Office of Advocacy rights to encourage the FDA to request an extension of the court-ordered one-year moratorium on FDA enforcement actions against manufacturers that timely submitted a PMTA to the agency by September 9, 2020, and to reverse its policy for review and submitted PMTAs by market uh, uh, by market share to keep small manufacturers' products on the market. Now, remember... I talked about this a few months ago, Phil. I said, most likely the FDA is going to go back to the judge and say that we don't have enough time. So this, again, supports that. And if you look a little bit further down, it says what the, the point of this is, you know, of course, they've got loans out as well, too, right? <laughs> so, yeah. so it's a little bit of financial. You know, it's not really all vaping tobacco harm reduction. But uh, the vaping industry, uh, the small businesses drive the American economy with approximately 99.9% of all firms being classified as small. And, you know, that, that kind of gives you, again, on the vaping is dead uh, thing, uh, an, an idea. If you think that any large in, in, our, fe- in our sector, uh, no. It's just a handful of companies are large. Every company, even the biggest company, you can put the jam monsters out there. You can put the nakeds out there. You know, these large, large uh, corporations – they're small. I mean, in FDA standards, it's small. In, in, in this tobacco field, it's small. So what they're asking here is that um, the FDA go back to the judge and get buy some more time, which we desperately need. Uh, kick in the bucket a little bit, <laughs> a little bit now, um, and uh, and and hopefully the the FDA uh, takes their recommendation uh, from the U.S. Small Business Administration and. Um, and and, uh, and and we get an extension. Also, really, really good news uh, this week, Phil. Well, that, that, that 
it, it, people should know this. If you go on YouTube and uh, and Google uh, GFN, you'll see some of the videos and stuff like that. But um, you know, if if vaping is dead, we always ask why. You know what 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 has happened? What you know, and we can go on and on. We've done many episodes here. We've talked about this field extensively. We all shared our thoughts of why we think that the FDA, uh, why uh, vaping is is dying here in the United States. But Clive Bates says it really, really great here. And just a one liner, and then we'll I'll explain a little bit further down as I read some of the stuff that he's he's wrote. Um, we must restore the confidence of consumers lost because of misinformation. I mean that that encapsulates everything, including sure. public health, hospitals, doctors, politicians. You know these people of power that 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 U.S. citizens look up to. Uh, that have you know convoluted or or misinformed or fear mongered you know it's a combination of all that misinformation that has caused the consumers to lose uh, confidence. Um, Phil, this year was the first year that smoking stopped declining in America. Hmm. Wonder why? Wonder why? Wonder, Wonder why. why? If we read a little bit further down here. Uh, obviously, he is, you know, he's talking about harm reduction uh, with a new administration. The new administration has talked about harm reduction publicly, um, but, you know, we haven't seen anything really from, from the Biden administration yet that's going to support that. Uh, but, of course, the process here in America is a little bit different because the, the vaping and the heated tobacco product, the, the heat not burned tobacco products, and other smoke-free products like I mean, lozenges and, and, and snus and stuff like that, they have to be deemed by the FDA as appropriate for the protection of public health, which is a huge burden to me. I mean, it's just, just extremely part, a huge burden to me. Multi-million, million-dollar process and doesn't guarantee anything that's going to go out there. But uh, what, he, what he's saying here is that um, a steep and increasing decline in smoking in 2017 – 2018 and 2019, and then no decline in 2020. There are likely three main reasons behind it. First, the impact of a false scare story about nicotine vaping causing lung injuries. Up, oh, the very famous Evali, right, Phil? Yep. Uh, the lung injury outbreak was in fact caused by a cutting agent added to illicit cannabis vapes, but it had a very high negative uh, effect on the perception of the risk of nicotine vaping. I mean, it, it, who vapes here and doesn't remember what we went through this, right? Oh, kids are dying and stop vaping. The CDC itself put out an alert and said, stop vaping everything. Anything that's vapable, stop vaping it. Stop using it. So in essence, it's telling people, stay smoking or go back to smoking. <laughs> Can you believe you know, if, if, you, if, you, if the poster is, uh, is driving you nuts, the CDC itself in its statement multiple times in media calls Warn people, stop vaping electronic cigarettes, stop vaping everything. Well, you know, but I mean, to be honest, I mean, the CDC really redeemed themselves with the whole COVID disaster. I mean, they, they did a really oh, good yeah. job with that. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Uh, second, from 2019 onwards, there was a sustained attack on vaping via flavor bans, taxes, and misinformation about harms. Because vaping is a substitute for smoking, an attack on vaping works like support for smoking. So what he's saying here, we're looking at city by city, state by state. We saw heavy taxation in some states. We saw flavor bans in some states. We saw outright bans in some municipalities, the sale of the product, um, squeezing down on the small businesses. Obviously, that's going to contribute, especially in large states like California and New York, where you have a lot of smokers. If you put burdens like that with heavy taxation or even flavor bans, uh, people are not going to switch, right? Flavors are very, very important for us to switch and quit smoking. The problem is, Dave, do you know who cares about that? Who? Oh. Nobody. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah, it's true. That's the problem, okay? Because the, the people, okay, the parents that don't want the kids to vape, they're happy about that. The big tobacco companies, um, you know, we're not losing customers. They're happy about that. Correct. Right. And and the people who just don't really give a shit about vapors or smokers, we're just one dirty group that needs to go away and die. Yeah. They don't care about that. So who who care who really has our back? Who really yeah. cares about that number? You would think maybe like the cancer foundations and the heart associated, you think they would care, but no. Uh, because you know, sick people make them money. 
Uh, so really, who's that report talking to? Who's going to say, oh, we need to get behind this and we need to solve this problem? Nobody gives a shit. Yeah. yeah. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. I was going to say that the third reason could possibly be COVID, right? People were stressed out. They didn't go out. They were stuck at home. They'd smoke more uh, because it was stressful and it was just boring uh, or they couldn't go get you know, products, it's easier to get cigarettes than it is to get vaping. So that could be a third potential as well, too. So um, go read this and, and go look at, at Clive Bates' videos on, on, on YouTube. This great information, very well put, very well spoken, much better than what I could have possibly do. But uh, it's great information to have. But what do we do with it? Like, how do we get it out there? He's absolutely right in all these things. And if we don't see something change, his suggestion, of course, is for the FDA to approve some lower risk products, which would be great for our industry, no matter what products there are. That's going to restore a little bit of the confidence. But the way that the FDA is going <laughs> with six million and counting SKUs, you know, when are we going to see that? When are we going to see uh, a vapor product be be given market authorization legally to be on the market, and then maybe that will trigger a little bit of a change in the states. Maybe that will, if they approve a flavored product, right? Because if they don't approve a flavored product, yeah, we'll have vaping as an option. But it's going to be a dual use product. People are not going to completely switch unless they can get rid of the taste of dirty ashtray in in their mouthfeel. Yeah, uh, Larry uh, is going to pee. Do we want to? Do we want to hold the show? Or we can. We, we can. Yeah, we can. We can just pause everything for. Uh, you for just wait. For, how's right. this prostate? Does yeah. it, is it taking a while for the stream to start, or are we uh, gonna no? Wait for exactly. He goes pretty quick because <laughs> the bladder doesn't hold a lot anymore. So it, it's know? actually a very you? very fast thing. So uh, you just want to uh, gaze at each other, you know, while we're uh, waiting for uh, yeah, Larry. yeah. Let's do that. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, Oh, and another, you know, another great story, Bill Tarling, you know, our good friend here and helps out with the show and all that. And uh, just just a great all around guy uh, went to his pulmonologist the other day and did some x-rays. And uh, they said that he is green dot clear. Right. He get he has the expected results for a non smoker in his lungs. Uh, he was a, a two pack a day. Right. Um, a heavy cigarette smoker. Um, for just over 37 years, Bill. I know. 37 years of smoking. I know. And now he went and got green dot clearance on his lungs. It's just unbelievable. But, you know, I mean, according to the government, he's, a, he's an anecdote. <laughs> he's, 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 yeah, he's, he's an, an anecdote, <laughs> right. But, uh, but uh, you know, we see this time and time and time and time again. You know, his vaping is dead, but it, it really... It, it you know you the only people that you're going to have to blame when history will judge them all day will have to be our own government and our own health agencies and the people that are paid to protect us and to protect our health are the only ones to blame for smokers not having a choice uh, a less harmful choice as as uh, vaping is and uh, it, I would change the title of of the show a little bit here midway to break out of that that clickbaitish title and say vaping is not dead but Americans will be dead the way things are going, and uh, unless something changes fast. Well said, my friend. The, the vaping is not dead, but people will be dead. Uh, and you're right. You know, if uh, you, let's say that um, everybody who currently smoked became a vapor, right? Yeah. And we don't like, I, I don't want new vapors. That's not the purpose of the show. We've talked about this many times. The purpose of the show is not to create new vapors. Sure. Uh, the purpose of this show is not to hook teens on vaping. The purpose of this show is to get adult smokers who have tried all of the standard cessation products, nothing's worked for them, to come over to vaping and enjoy a healthier lifestyle through tobacco harm reduction, right? If right. we could get everybody who currently smokes over to vaping and you follow my philosophy, right, you now have a window where everybody here is vaping and everybody here is doing nothing. And the, this this line goes over, goes over, and then eventually everybody just kind of dies, and yeah. the industry dies as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Now I'm sure not a lot of people will, will, would would agree with me. The big companies and the, the people who are making a lot of money and the people who depend sure. on this, I would be okay with that. Personally, I would be okay with that. If in 50 years, 70 years, whatever, vaping died completely because nobody's vaping and nobody's smoking, I'm good with that. But the problem continues to be is that you have people who are smoking and they missed the glory days of vaping. 
they, they missed that that part, that point in time when vaping was a magnet for people, when vaping attracted people, and when it when vaping got a lot of people off of cigarettes. Yeah. So you know we have to continue to push the technology. We have to continue to talk to people about this. But my fear is that the only thing that they're going to have left is that they're going to have to go to the C store and buy whatever is on the shelf. Right. Yeah. I mm. mean, even if it comes down to that, I'm still going to support it. I'm still going to tell people to do that over smoking if nothing else works for them. But to, the, the, the mass exodus that we saw uh, of people leaving smoking, going over to vaping, I don't think we're ever going to see that again. Unless something dramatic happens, it has slowed down everywhere. Phil, it's not just here. I mean, internationally, you know. I mean, Europe obviously it's a little bit different than here. I mean, there's still you know vape, vape is still doing well, but it's not. We're not converting. You know, the 30th of May was a World Anti Smoking Day, and it, you know, obviously we hijacked it and made it World Vape Day the 31st. So, I ran a special at my stores, which I do every year. Uh, which, by the way, I didn't see nearly any. Did you see any vape shop doing that? I mean, from the pages that you follow on Facebook, feel for here. No, I didn't. Like, I didn't see anything. Like, uh, you know, I mean, we used to see this all the time. Remember, we used to see this in 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 the vaping industry. Um, a lot of vape shops would promote, you know, starter kits and stuff like that. I don't see that at all in America yeah. anymore. Which, again, that's a little bit of our fault as well, too. So let's not just blame all the government, but. What I did is, for a week, that entire week, I put um, a device. I give them the choice of a T18, uh, a DV, or an EQ, depending what s style they want, and a 10 mil bottle of you know 12 milligram uh, tobacco liquid for 10 bucks, 10 euros. Okay, that's like it's like 12 bucks or whatever, whatever the exchange rate is now. And uh, every year I do it, you know, I get about 20, 25 new customers this year we got like 14 i want to say 13 14 so there's a little bit of a dip there in introductions of new people as well too um but you know i mean it's it's still prevalent there's still a lot of people doing it there's still a lot of ex-smokers and uh there's still that excitement you know through the community and uh a big change you know you don't see that cloud thing a, a lot anymore like like we did here but um, it, it is a little bit off into new customers. It's not as, you know, and again, all the international news pick up the stories from America, obviously. So that's had a big effect in Europe as well, too. And slowly we're working to break out of it. But, um, but yeah, it's a little bit slowed down there, too. Yeah. I'm not sure if they did any kind of promotion over at Naples Vapor. Usually he does do stuff like that. I, I would be kind of surprised if he didn't. But, I mean, that would be the thing to do because it, it's an investment in people and it's an investment in your business, right? Yeah. Basically give something away. You, you charge them cost on it, right? Give something away. Get them, get them going on vaping because, you know, as a business – uh, from a business perspective, yeah, you might lose a little bit of money on the uh, on the initial um, purchase, whatever it is that they're buying. But then, you know, you have a return customer. You have somebody who's going to continue to come in to buy coils and to buy liquid and potentially yeah, upgrade we, their equipment too. We right? don't make we don't make no money on hardware anyway, Phil. Anybody right. that tells you they make money on hardware, they just don't understand business. I'm going to get 20 devices in. I'm going to sell them. You know, I'm going to sell them for 50 bucks within two weeks. The competitor is going to put it five bucks down. You're going to drop it five bucks. Then you're going to drop it to discount it to get rid of it because you've only sold five. And you got to, sometimes you get some of them that are just stuck, won't be able to sell. So if you average all that out through the year, you make no money on hardware. Sometimes you lose. So the bread and butter of the business is liquid and cools, period, right? Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to bring new customers in and 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 have them switch to get those new customers to come in and buy their consumables which is liquid and coils the device to me is irrelevant i wish i could give better devices free they're just too expensive i you know, you know right. I, that's what big companies do enjoy right now if you go to the store and buy an enjoy pod it's one dollar yeah. it's one dollar right so you, you buy the pods whatever but Enjoy is selling it, but of course they're in you know seventeen thousand gas stations, so they, they can do it. For me, it's, it's difficult. I wish I could give them a Chroma Z for free, for example, but it's too expensive. 
But, you know, I gave them a device that works. You know, the T18 is good or the, the, the EQ or whatever form factor that they wanted. And it's a good introduction to get them to, to try vaping, right? And uh, I think that, I think at the end of the day, I mean, if somebody's committed to quit smoking, they'll try something. If they, if they can do it for a few days and they say it works, they're going to come and make the investment, investment and spend 40, 50 bucks to get a good starter kit. Uh, but it gives them that little, mm, that little sweet taste inexpensive yeah. taste to to see if the product is going to work for them and if you match it right if you match the right liquid if you you know you, you sit there and, and talk to the person explain to them how how to use it what to expect and stuff like that you know chances are you're gonna you, you're gonna be successful with that customer and and, and he's going to be a customer a loyal customer at least for the beginning of his journey you, you know you're absolutely right a couple other reasons why we're not going to have the conversions like we had um, Marshall hit it uh, on it before. And, you know, I've said this too, is that you, you, you don't have the community aspect. You don't have that support system. You don't have the excitement of the shows. You don't have the excitement of the grand openings of the shops, but you also don't have the hobby aspect. There's no hobby aspect to going to a C store and buying a, a, a pod or a disposable, sure. you know, it, I remember the early days of the uh, the vape shows again, you know, where you had all the uh, the, the 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 tables around the conference uh, room, and then in the center there were all those 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 seats, those tables, and everybody would have their their big toolbox with all their building uh, equipment, and they would all sit there, and people would be like, "Oh, what are you doing?" And people they would show you, and they would share, and that's like that was part of it. That was part of the excitement to get you to, Oh, you know, there's something here. They're having fun. It's a community. I want to be a part of it. And Oh, I also get to quit smoking in the process. You know, that's a pretty cool thing. The other thing too, is, is what you just said, the interaction between that vape shop and the consumer, how important that is. We know how important that is. You have to get the right device the right e-liquid into that person's hand and the only way that it's going to happen is a conversation between the consumer and the guy behind the counter right how's that going to happen in a c-store yeah it's, it's not it's just not it's just not going to happen the other interesting thing too i want to just go back to um disposables do you realize that the capacity on disposables is now larger than the capacity of Larry's bladder. Did you know that? <laughs> I did not know that. Th that, is, actually that is a are. very they interesting. Are, yes. John Tricali, what's up, John, uh, asks in Facebook, do you think cannabis has a lot to do with these numbers? I'm not quite sure I understand that, Phil. What, what numbers are, are we talking about? Um, yeah, I don't understand the question. Yeah, I don't understand. Okay, if you expand a little bit, John, I'd be more yeah. than I'd be, I'd be more than happy to to answer that. But you know, I mean, listen, I I, I don't have nothing against weed, right? I, I, we've said this a million times, but but I think that that blending the two uh, is is a horrible idea for for tobacco harm reduction. I just think it's a horrible idea. Um, hate me if you want, unfriend me, block me, do whatever you want to do. I'm sorry I offended potheads or whatever, but uh, I don't think that the two belong in the same sentence when we're talking about these shops. Now, I understand you have to sell it, stay in business, blah, blah, and that's your choice or whatever, but my own personal feeling is that those two products just don't belong together. Uh, they're, they're two completely different paths of a product. Uh, we're having, obviously, medicinal cannabis or whatever you're going to use it for, or even recreational cannabis. That's fine, whatever you're going to do. But we just talked about earlier the Avali. Now we're talking about weed carts and all that. Now we're selling them in the vape shops. It, it just it 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 really confuses lawmakers. It really confuses consumers. I think they should be separate. That's just my my feeling about it. You know, you got to understand, like it like it or not, okay. There are a lot of people that are anti weed. A lot of people are anti weed. Sure. A lot of people are anti marijuana. Right? They 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 don't like the smell. They don't like people doing sure. it. They don't think it should be legalized. Um, so even if it were to become legal uh, across the U.S., uh, it's going to be probably several generations before it's completely accepted. Right? And and again, like it or not, that's just the reality. Uh, I personally don't care. Uh, I might even enjoy it every now and then. Um, the, but that's not the point, right? The point is that there are some people that are very anti, very negative against it. Now, when you take that and you combine it with a vape shop, that negativity carries over to the vaping aspect, right? It carries, yeah. a, oh, you know, it's just vaping is just, they're just doing drugs. They're just doing drugs, doing drugs, right? And y y you almost have to... You have to explain it sometimes, sometimes to people because you, they they see you vaping like, 
they're doing drugs. Yeah, He's what? Doing and, drugs, and a right? lot of people ask you, what? Oh, what is in that? What is in? Like you know, they give you that little sneaky look. It's either them trying to you know use Dude. it if it has weed inside, then you tell right. them it's nicotine. They're like, ah, no, like those kill you. <laughs> like right. this is the perception that we have, right? Bra. It's uh, it's it's bra. it's it's, it's <laughs> bra. Listen, bra. Listen, bra. 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 If I had THC in my vape and I vape the amount that I do all day, I'd be high as a motherfucker. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So yeah, but no, I. But that, but that's the thing. I mean, that's what we're up against. You know, our early days of me vaping on like you know day one and going to parties and people would look at it like, oh, what is that? What are you doing? Oh my god, yeah. I want to hear all about it. I want to know what it's go- what's going on with that. Excited, you know, curious. Now they're like, oh. Dirty vapor, yeah. Drug does drugs, right? You, they look at you like you're like you're evil, yeah. Uh, and it, I'm just trying not to smoke anymore, not die of cancer. That's yeah. all. Let me see some of these comments here because you know everybody's jumping on me, of course. I and I expected it. Uh, Michael says nicotine and THC going hand in hand. When you're high, the craving for nicotine is greater. <laughs> Again, not my point. I didn't say that it's not, um, but uh, no, that's not my point. Hey, Peggy at E6 Source, how you doing, Peggy? Uh, as a vape shop, if you can vape it, I, again, even if you can vape it only, which we're, that's not what we're seeing in vape shops. We're seeing combustible flour at vape shops, Peggy, right? Am I right? Yeah. Um, aside from the combustible, even if you just can vape it as well. The issue becomes when you convolute those two products and you put them in the vape shop is, is, is how do we approach lawmakers on the definition of what tobacco harm reduction is and what the vape shop is? You understand what I'm saying? This is the problem that we have. And as somebody that goes to the state capitol three or four times a year, and I've had to fight for this product for the last eight years, seven years through, through, uh, through TSFA, I, I run into this situation all the time. What are they selling? What are they selling in there? What, and you tell them this is for adults only. They come to quit smoking, blah, 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 blah. It sounds really good. But ultimately, the reality is that if any of these lawmakers walk into the shop, uh, we got a problem. <laughs> right? We have a problem because then they, they kind of feel like you misled them, right? So solution, okay, all the state organizations um, dissolve tomorrow, right? All these these smoke, and then you become a vape, hemp, THC, Delta 8, 9, 10, 69, you know, what association you represent, all these, that's great, that's fine, and you move forward. But if you're representing the vapor industry, you know, it's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing when people have asked me, you know, about big tobacco companies. You know, it's, I'm happy that big tobacco companies have less harmful products on the market and vape products and heat not burn. I'm happy about it. But they also sell cigarettes. So how can I have Philip Morris on TSFA, for example, right? If I'm promoting those, the, 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 I'm... I'm going after the same customers. I'm going after that combustible smoker. So uh, it, in the eyes of the lawmaker, they'd be like, well, why is you know this company on, on your thing? They still sell cigarettes if you're saying that you're so passionate about quitting smoking and blah, blah, blah. So I, yeah. hope, I hope that makes sense. And, and yeah. look, I know some people aren't going to like it, but you know, I, I, really, I really don't care. Right. Sean, what's up? Sean uh, Casey says, uh, can you talk yeah, about the just- fourth, fourth gen uh, vape tech? Uh, we'll talk about it uh, in the second half of the show. We, uh, we want to clear some of the uh, vaping is dead misconceptions. Out, out yeah. and, and and by the way, Sean, it's nothing new. Uh, it's just what's in the census. Yes. Right. And yes. and the census information is all out there. Yes. Uh, let me see some of the uh, uh, let me see some of the uh, comments here again. I, I think this is a really good subject. Um, because, and I see that there's participation. And look, I, I understand that there's a lot of vapors that 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 dig weed. <laughs> we've been to vape shows <laughs> trust me we were at we were at richmond virginia one time for a vapor con and i swear to god i go for me to get to my hotel room i smelled weed the entire way and i was on the other side of the hotel but i you know i get it i get it i get it, i get it um and, and i'm not bashing that i mean whatever you uh, i'm for, for adult freedom you can do whatever you want to do i'm only talking about the business side of convoluting the two products in a vape shop that's Clearly, their the its original goal was to help people quit smoking. Yeah, and, and again, I might be wrong. I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm just saying my 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 thoughts, uh, and I can do that. Um, all right. Uh, 
So many evil people, they smoke too. I'm, weed, I'm in a weed-friendly state, except not in public. I've been questioned by the team of a half a dozen cops about six years ago. Uh, yeah, Las Vegas is a perfect example. You can't use it in Las Vegas, but they sell it in Las Vegas. Isn't that ironic? What do you mean you can't use it in Vegas? You can't use it in Vegas. You can buy in it in Vegas. You, nowhere. Nowhere. In fact, you sure about them, Apple? Absolutely. In, in, in oh. fact, they started cracking down on vape pens uh, on just regular uh, because they, they, they couldn't tell if you had weed there or not. <laughs> and of course, if you tip, you know, the bouncers and all that, they will let you do it. But, but, but I, when I, I was in Vegas three weeks ago before I left to go to Greece, and everywhere I walked in the street, I smelled it. <laughs> everywhere. I didn't see anybody using it, but I smelled it everywhere. So they were just like, you know, whatever they were doing. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, a good little comment here. A benefit of uh, of vaping is that if you switch from smoking to vaping and you try to sell your house, if you're vaping, the number one selling flavor in the unsalted line, the delicious watermelon peach, then your se- your house will sell much quicker. Because of the aroma. Smoking. <laughs> because of the beautiful aroma that will be in your home. Uh, when you vape watermelon peach, the number one best-selling flavor, the confirmed <sighs> number one best-selling flavor in the unsalted line. Yes. And any day now, any day now, from Richard, since Sean is watching, uh, we're going to get those new flavors. I'm pretty yes. sure. Yeah, right? I'm waiting on Richard Hong. But I mean, seriously. Yeah. He said, yeah, I'll be two weeks. Yeah. yeah okay. uh, but anyway, uh, uh, John Tricoli says, yes, the states that numbers have shown lower vaping and smoking numbers. Um, I, I don't think cannabis has anything to do with it. I really don't. I think that the states that are more uh, have lax regulation, we see a lot of people vaping, and the, the states that have really heavy burdens and regulations, we see people smoking. I think it's plain and simple. And, and there's studies that have been done on that. There's a study that, that came out from San Francisco that said after they banned flavors, smoking went up. Uh, study in Pennsylvania, the same thing. As taxes came and made it the, the product more expensive, more people went back to cigarettes. I mean, there's plenty of studies. It's just that we can't get those studies on Fox News is what I'm saying. We can't get these studies on CNN. We can't get them. We can't get them on a mainstream online web publisher. We get them on Filter Mag. We'll get, we'll get them on you know these you know whatever. But we we can't get these stories out there. Uh, Green Eyed Lady says again. Green Eyed Lady, you know I I love you, but you you're again you you you're only thinking about one thing. And she says. In a state with a flavor ban, how can you expect a shop to stay open selling only <laughs> tobacco flavors? I, again, I, I, it, that has nothing to do with what I'm saying. You know, I, you do whatever you need to do to keep your businesses open. If you want to sell crack, sell crack. I don't have to agree with it, right? My opinion is that it shouldn't be that way, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> Uh, I, I can go back and I guarantee you that 99% of the vape shop owners today, I can go back in their Facebook history mm-hmm, back in 2011 and 2012 and show you the post that said, I'm only doing this. I'm leaving my career because I want to help people quit smoking. That's a fact. Again, you might not like to hear the truth, but that is the truth. Um, so very, mid- very true. I noticed that. Um, oh Christ! What, what, what was the last show that we did in the states? Do you remember? Uh, the, the, yeah, yeah T, uh, TPE. Was it a TPE in Las Vegas? Yeah, I noticed that a lot, I, and 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 it, it's a, it was discouraging, right? Because a lot of those people that were like, "I'm here to save smokers," yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then yeah. they're just all pushing CBD. Oh, you should have seen it now. And they're all pushing Kratom. And they're all pushing Delta 8. Uh, you know, I, look, I, and I get it. Like exactly what Green Eye Lady said, right? I get it. I understand that people got to eat. I understand people got to support their mm-hmm, families. Mm-hmm. I understand. But that doesn't mean that we have to like it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, right? Absolutely. And also... It also, you, know, you also say, uh, I'm going to claim shenanigans on a lot of these people that were in the business to save smokers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Come on. I was at TPE just now in Las Vegas, and there was literally one or two open liquid uh, companies in the entire show. TPE is huge. I mean, you've been two huge halls. It was disposables, Delta 8, Kratom, CBD, full on that there's two maybe three open liquid no hardware companies you didn't see any open vapor products or anything like that it was it was it was a, it, it was very discouraging but <laughs> delta eight is the delta nine is the real deal 
I'm going to wait for Delta 10 kid base. How about that? <laughs> it oh, seems Delta like it's getting really better, so why settle for nine? Delta 10 really mess you up. Delta 10 is the real mm-hmm. deal. I heard. I don't know. Um, but uh, anyway, back back, back to, to, to what I was saying. So Green Owl Lady, don't take it personal. I, I understand the businesses and all that. I get it. But it's not, again, it's just an opinion. You don't have to like it or you just respect it, just like I respect yours. Um, so uh, another question that came a little bit earlier uh, was, uh, and, and I wanted to talk about this uh, last serious point, unless something else pops up. Um, this is from Disma Fugger here. Uh, UK Vapor here. What is the latest with USBS and age verification? Is it almost business as usual, apart from those who shot up shop? Um, you know, this USBS thing, Phil, reminds me a lot of what we saw when the regulations first came out. You know, when the regulations dropped, we saw people just give up, just, sh- you know, close their doors. And when these regulations with the ATF came out, a lot of people did the same thing. They close shops. We, we've seen a lot of big websites, including My Freedom Smokes. I didn't know. Just found out today. Um, yeah. Big, big websites uh, going out of business. I will tell you what is happening right now. Um, to sell legally in America, you have to register with the ATF, and then you have to register with every state that you do business in. Every month, you have to file a report with that state, and in that state, some of them require you to collect tax and pay that tax to the state and also file a report of who you're selling the product to. USPS currently has made an announcement that they're going to follow this new uh, law that was signed in by Trump. Okay, this, I'm, I'm putting that out there just to be, you know, balance out the Biden story earlier because you think Republicans or Democrats care. Nobody cares. Nobody gives a shit about your health. Um, so this law that was passed, the USPS has announced that gonna, you know they're not you're not going to be able to sell to a consumer through vaping. However, uh, through shipping. Yeah, you cannot ship to a consumer from a business to a consumer through USPS, yes. right? Yes. That's that's what they announced. However, they have to draft a final rule and publish it, letting people know that this is happening. The day that they were supposed to do that, they came out and said, well, we're a little bit you know, behind, and uh, we haven't published this rule yet. Give us some time. We're going to publish it, uh, and that's it. So c- companies are con- – I just ordered – Two days ago, I'll show it to you on my email here. I ordered uh, some of that Yogi Sour Apple that, that I like. And I paid. Uh, they actually had a special. It was thirteen ninety nine or something like that. So I, I bought six bottles, and I paid for adult signature USPS, which is fourteen ninety nine, I think, or twelve ninety nine, something like that. Um, so USPS is still shipping, and rightfully so. I'm not telling you that it's legal or illegal. I think it's great. I don't think anybody's going to do anything to you, though, because there's no final rule published yet, okay? So if you are registered with the ATF and you're following reports, you can continue to ship with USPS. That's what I'm telling my clients. That's what I'm telling anybody that asks me. A lot of people will message me looking for advice and stuff like that, and I tell them the same thing. I think it is completely legal for you to... Uh, you can continue to, I shouldn't say legal, you can continue to ship with USPS until we see a final rule from the USPS. And I'm going to tell you one thing, Phil. Yes. If it takes USPS, Days for them to send me a package from Kentucky to Tennessee, which is a neighboring state over. Most likely, this final rule is going to take forever to come up in the years. Yes, right? <laughs> probably. Yeah. Um, uh, shipping from the submarine is a lot faster, by the way. Yeah, so it, is, it know. is. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, drone. Drone is the future. We do. We need to do drone delivery from the submarine to That's your cool. house. That's a good idea. Huh? That's a billion That's a dollar idea. idea. So what is it? I think Domino's Pizza has the uh, the, the, yeah, the, the self driving cars yeah, 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 now. The See little, that? The little robot, yeah. robot, yeah. robot. Yeah. That'll, car. that'll that'll work out really well until it kills somebody in the Domino's. <laughs> until pizza somebody steals them. Can you imagine him trying to, to deliver in a in a bad neighborhood like Compton? <laughs> steal the whole thing and go pawn it. <laughs> <laughs> the self driving car is up on uh, what do you call it? Jacks and there's no tires. <laughs> Uh, listing no on Craigslist. No pizza. That's it. You know they're gonna spray paint it. You know, just like they do a stolen car. Just take the wheels <laughs> off and jack the wheels and sell them. Yeah, on it's eBay. a great idea. I can't <laughs> wait to see that go. Uh, but, you know, you know what's, what's interesting too. Like whether it be seven dollars or nine dollars, some somebody uh, got charged nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Uh, you know, for for liquid or whatever for their shipment. Nine dollars and ninety nine cents over what you're paying for e liquid yeah. today is still about um, I don't know five hundred percent cheaper than what liquid was when we first started vaping. Pretty much, right? Yeah. I mean, 
that we had gold in a bottle and they really could have charged anything that they wanted, but it was the, uh, the, the, the wars of everybody trying to be cheaper than the, the, the other e-liquid company that drove the price down. And, you know, look, if the only way we can vape is to pay a $7 or $9 shipping, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Here, here, I have my order up. I just found it here on my, in my email inbox. So yes, I pay for liquid. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's If it's liquid that I like, this is for RDL. It's not my MTL usual stuff. So uh, this is for uh, uh, restricted direct lung. Um, so they charged me thirteen ninety nine for shipping, and it's adult signature, right? Six bottles of liquid uh, and shipping a hundred bucks. I mean, hundred yeah. bucks. I tell yeah. you what, for thirty bucks, I'll send you some watermelon <laughs> peach, the number one best selling flavor in the unsalted line. Delicious, by the way. But you know this sour send apple. I I really like the sour apple. Ju I don't like it in MTL. I know you've been talking about it a lot. Yeah. yeah. Is is it uh, is it uh, cooled? Is it is it have the cooling? Oh yeah, baby, it's oh, dipped yeah, yeah, in yeah, cooling. Okay. It's got it's got ice cubes in it, man. It's cold. Yeah. It is really really cold. Of it, course. It's not cooling. It just it, it rapes your throat it does, on the way it down. Does. It's probably if, it does. if Dimitri likes it, that's what it does. And yeah. I like I like six milligram restricted direct lung with cooling in it because it gives me that sensation. It's just like you said, it's throat hit, but it's an RDL throat hit. It's not a yeah. th it's not a zero or one and a half milligram throat hit for me. I like a punch with the nicotine and that cooling sensation i feel like it goes down and just like you know crumbles down my throat going down i but that's the way that i enjoy vaping that i just uh, got but, strangely turned on i don't know why but i mean I, I mean i'll vape this during the day with my mtl so i have my mtl here and my rdl here and i just go back and forth so i mean you know 100 bucks gonna last me you know a few months it's not it's so not, you're, you're dual using is what you're saying i'm right? dual using yes yes yeah, absolutely good, good for you absolutely so I think I mean you know it, whatever it, what if it's eight dollars for a signature twelve thirteen it doesn't make any difference you can still get your stuff is what I'm saying now it's unfortunate to see some websites close down because unfortunately if you want to do it legally it's a huge burden it's a huge burden for you to file reports every month especially if you're a small business I mean it's a full dedicated job you know there's companies out there that do this for a living uh, and they've done it in the tobacco sector for years they handle all the reports for you and you pay them but these smaller companies can't afford to pay that. Um, so, but I understand it and, 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 and to be fair, there's a lot of people still black market selling. So if you know where to go and ask, you know, you can PayPal somebody, they'll send you something, you know, that you can still do it. And as tobacco flavors, as green eye ladies, lady said, I can get in New Jersey right now has a flavor ban. I, I can tell you 10 vape shops. You can go get flavored product right now. Um, in, in whichever way you want to do it. it's tobacco number one, tobacco number two, tobacco number three, whatever, and it's all like watermelon peach. Uh, or they actually have the product and they're like, fuck it. You know, if they come, they come. Um, their customers need it. So so there's a lot of that going on. See what Bill says. Um, Pedro Maghalas, what the fuck is going on with in America with vaping? As a European looking in, I'm perplexed. Uh, vaping is dead. You didn't hear? You didn't get the memo? <laughs> Dead, vaping man. is dead. <laughs> this is the last show, by the way. This is the last show. Um, and, oh, I, actually, this is not the last show, but this is the last show you're going to be able to watch for free. Tell him, Phil. Tell him. Make yeah. the announcement. Go ahead. Yeah, the, the announcement is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, from uh, this point on, uh, you are going to have to pay for our show. Be, be a little bit more Jay Hayes. Be a little bit more Jay Hayes when you're doing well, it. Well, I didn't, I didn't watch that video, so I really can't. <laughs> just, just, just pretend. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, so, so yeah, um, wh wh what, what platform are we going to be on? Uh, only fans. Yeah. Only fans. Only fans. Oh, so <laughs> not only are you going to have to watch, um, you're going to have to pay to watch of our, our videos, but we're also going to be naked. Um, when we're, oh yes. shit, nobody's going to watch that. Yes. 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 They're going to yeah, pay us not to be naked. That's okay. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. If you pay, we won't be naked. By the way, so I saw, you, you I, pony saw up. I saw something ridiculous the other day. I saw somebody Please. that's advertising a no nudity only fans. So you pay, I mean, that's like drinking non-alcoholic beer. You know, I mean, I, I don't mind it, but I wouldn't pay for it. You know, if somebody buys it from me, I'll drink it. <laughs> but what's the, what's the reason I'm having an OnlyFans is I have no nudity. Ridiculous. Uh, that's just a side note. Uh, did uh, I tell you what happened to me on um, on Facebook? Huh? A couple, a couple, did I tell you what happened to me on Facebook? No. What? I, I think I said I think I, I said it in, in the last show before you went you went um, to Greece. Uh, I type I typed something. I was joking uh, about something with OnlyFans, and I typed OnlyFans on Facebook, and like I instantly got locked out of Facebook. 
And they were like, mm, can't do anything. Yeah. With, you can't talk about. You can't promote. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's porn banned. On, on. And I'm like, it, like, I'm like, look, like it was nothing like promoting porn. It was just a joke, which I find very interesting because they stopped me from doing that. But the other day, I was talking about the Friends reunion, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, um, I, I typed something about Jennifer Aniston and that she likes mm -hmm. me, right? I put that in a post, and yeah. that didn't get flagged for um, false uh, fake news. I don't know what what is fake news. Yeah, you I know, don't know if, what it is anymore. Really, Dan but, Loco says he's a hazer. Hey, Dan, Dan, we're friends with Jay. Don't worry, it's just a joke, man. Don't worry. J chill out. <laughs> don't get your panties in a bunch. <laughs> he's gonna go tell Jay now. Jay, you remember like what we did with Grim Green? Somebody went and told Grim Green, and he came in the yeah. chat immediately that day. No, Don, it's not Dan. Good. It's not Dan Loco. It's, it's Don, Don, Loco. Don Loco. Don Loco. What the hell's yeah, wrong yeah, with yeah. you? It's now he's really gonna go. Tell you got his <laughs> name wrong. It's all good, man. It's all good. Don, tell him to go watch the uh, the the vape fellas video. He's mentioned in that video. He, yeah, he should yeah. watch it. He should yeah. promote it for me. Tell yeah. him to go do that. He doesn't watch. <laughs> he doesn't watch your videos. He doesn't. He doesn't like you. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I don't watch other people's uh, video things. All right. If the USPS ever starts making a profit, they should thank the vapors. I mean, seriously, Don. I mean, this is absolutely true. I, I look. They're already bankrupt, right? Um, so no, there's no telling how much money they're going to lose from this, but eventually that's how the government works. Since it is a government agency, that's exactly what happens. They make these decisions and then they bankrupt. Then they try to blame everybody for it and they're just going to give more money. And then, you know, next thing you know, the stamp's going to be, you know, $1.75 to send a letter. That's, that's usually how they, they, uh, they <laughs> operate. Larry F says little 10 meal bottles were eight, 10 bucks back in the day. I remember those days. I remember those days, uh, vividly, See? my friend. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Uh, Nick had saying, a huge yo? sale, probably going out of business as Kid Bass. I think a lot of people are doing. I think a lot of people are doing sales. And like, and and, and look, my my main job is Anakin, okay. But my other job is I have a company called Global Evaper Consulting, and I work with a few manufacturers, and I work with a few companies, large and small. Uh, or I contract work of people who need some help with it, get whatever they want to do, and I guide them through some processes. Or I give them honest. I mean, Phil will tell you uh, when I meet with people, the first thing I tell them is like, I will tell you, I'll be honest with you. I will tell you the law, and then you're gonna make a. I will give you some advice, and then you're gonna make a business decision. I'm not gonna make the decision for you, but I'm gonna tell you everything Sorry. as as you should know it, and then you make a decision. Whatever, I'll respect it. I don't care what the decision is gonna be. Absolutely. That um, is exactly how you operate. That's exactly how I operate. So yes. when people ask me, medium-sized companies or in smaller companies, when they ask me, you know, I, if you would have asked me three years ago, I would have told you not to even register with the FDA. Because <laughs> guess what? Everybody that registered with the FDA back in the day and registered there, remember, everybody's like, oh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm compliant. I've registered with the FDA. Everybody that registered are getting letters now because <laughs> you registered, you know, 4,000 products with the FDA, but you haven't submitted a PMTA. Guess what? <laughs> little flag comes up. You Red get a warning letter. You have to take it out. So it, why am I saying that? If you're going to operate since the, since the registration time, which was three years ago, and you operated three years, the advice would I give you is, Try to make as much money to protect your family, invest in something else, and then gracefully at some point exit. Capitalistic country, we say it all the time. Um, you know, it just happens. It's, that's business. I'm sorry. Uh, we, we came into a very volatile market in the United States, uh, which uh, unfortunately considers this product a tobacco product, and we have to buy by tobacco laws. I don't like it. I don't agree with it. I didn't write the law. Don't blame me. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I would have given you that advice. And and you could have taken it and ran with it if you might have taken it and said, you know, oh, I'm going to I'm going to tough it out. I'm going to try to do everything by the book. The problem with doing everything by the book, and I ran into this just the other day, when this decision came out to throw the USVA court case out and not be heard by the Supreme Court, I posted it on my Facebook and somebody replied, I'm not going to mention the name, but because sometimes people, get, vapors get confused sometimes, said, why should we change it now? We have the PMTA pathway. We did all this work. Our PMTAs are in. Why should we change the process now? But the process has just begun for the PMTA. Just because you filled out a few forms in your modules doesn't mean that the PMTA is over with. When they start asking you for, for mice testing <laughs> and clinical work and biomarkers of exposure, and you have to measure urine from people that are using your product, uh, just, you know, I'm going through this process now with a company. We're millions deep in, Phil. Millions. I'm not talking about 100,000, 100, 200. I'm talking about millions deep in it. And we're still unsure if we can get five or six products through this entire process. Right. Okay? 
Right. So why should you change it? That's why. Because the PMTA process is not just filling out a few forms. There's a lot of money involved. And that process is unfair and it's unjust. Uh, and it does not match the category of the product, especially a product that has the potential to save a lot of smuggler lives. So um, um, I got sidetracked again. See, this is what happens all the time. But but think think what make a decision today of what you're going to do. And then if we, let's say we get a year extension, right? Let's say that, that this goes. They go to the judge. They get a year extension. If if you see that you're running into a point where money becomes an issue, um, what I would do. Stop right there. Whatever you spent, you spent. Try to make some money for the next couple of years. Put some money aside. Invest in something else. Start a new business. And uh, and and hopefully you're going to be okay. Uh, because it's going to be very, very difficult for for 99.9% .9 of the companies to pass through the PMTA. And that's the honest to God's truth. Again, whether you like it or not. Bad news for Phil. A little comedy relief. Somebody just messaged Jennifer Aniston that Phil said she liked him. She popped into the chat. But when she saw he wasn't wearing the Demi Crotch holder shorts, she left. I told, See, by the way. I knew I should have worn those. I should wear those for every show. I, just in I, case I, need I was going to ask you, how, what's the success rate with those boxers that I got you? It, it, it's the be problem right. is, it's gotta, it's gotta unless right. I go into a crowded area and remove my pants, right? Nobody really knows that I'm wearing them. <laughs> so nobody sees them but you. That's, that's, this it's supposed, really cool. Yeah, exactly. They're supposed to be nobody seen by women, man. And, and look, look. If I get to a point with somebody where they're seeing the underwear, the underwear aren't necessary at that point. <laughs> it's true. I, I I thought maybe it would you know turn them on a little bit more and you know. Well, you know what I think I might do is like maybe on the next uh, ne the next vape show we go to, I'll just get a T-shirt that says I'm wearing the Dimitri underwear. Yeah, that that's good. Work. That's and, a good idea, and, right? And it's ten dollars if you want to see it. I was just gonna say that. I was just gonna say that. I'll, 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 yeah, I'm wearing the Dimitri underwear, and I'll put my PayPal account right underneath that. Speaking <laughs> speaking of shows, it looks like things are getting back to normal. Phil, yeah, uh, we got uh, Vap Italy announced the second and third of October in Rome, Italy, and then, of course, our good friend Patrick with Vap Expo in Paris. 16th, 17th, and 18th of October, right on my birthday. We're definitely going to be at the Paris show. I mean, we go we go there every year, and it's a it's a big one for us and our products. But uh, it's nice to see that a little normalcy is. You know, today I went out. Um, I wear a mask, uh, even though I'm vaccinated. You know, I just don't want you know somebody to say, "Oh, you need to have your mask on." Uh, but I saw a lot of people out today at the mall with no mask. It looks like, I mean, it feels like things are getting you know, a little bit back to normal. Um, and, the, and the vape shows are a big part of this community. And it's it's nice to see them announcing that they're going to go through with it. You know, it, it, it. Like you say, you know, you're, you're going places and you're seeing people without the mask and everything. And you feel like things are getting back to normal. I'm glad that's happening for you, right? Uh, <laughs> because it's been back to normal here for a long time yeah. now, right? I mean, it's a little bit of a different uh, thing. Uh, I can tell you that, like, right after the CDC said, because God knows we should trust everything that the CDC says, um, but right after the CDC said that, you know, masks aren't really re needed uh, if you're vaccinated uh, or for outside or whatever, that yeah. was pretty much the final straw. I mean, like, nobody was wearing, uh, not, yeah. not a lot of people were wearing masks locally anyway, but that was like, that was, uh, you know, the 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 key. That now, like even the stores too. All the stores that did require masks, now they all say, "Look, if you're not vaccinated, don't you know wear a mask." But yeah. uh, everybody else, you know, yeah. come on in. And, and then again, who's going to say that? I mean, you know, who's going to say that you're not vaccinated? Everybody's going to just walk in and say, "I'm vaccinated." Of course. <laughs> so, so of course. You know. come on. Uh, it, you know, it was in, in Greece. Um, uh, on a little side note, uh, they. <laughs> You know, I, I'm not an unreasonable person to feel. I follow the law. I follow the rules. If you tell me to wear a mask, I wear a mask. I don't have any problem with it. I'm not one of these guys that are going to say, I'm going to spy freedom and I'm a patriot and whatever. I don't care. Um, but in Greece, you have to wear masks outside while you're walking. <laughs> shitting me? Really? Right. No, no, I'm not shitting you. It's going to change now. But up to now, this is what, while I was there, that was the, the rules. And. You go to a coffee shop or a bar or a restaurant. You sit down. You take the mask off, and you can, you know, you can eat and drink without the mask on and all that. But the government implemented a rule alongside with that. Well, number one, my employees at my stores. Now, keep in mind, I got nine employees now. Uh, 
because I'm opening the four store now. Um, they have to have a self test done twice a week that I have to pay for. <laughs> so they they have in Europe. This is how advanced they they have a little self test. You take the little self test, you spit in it, and it tells you if you're positive or negative. Um, you don't even have to go to to do the rapid test and stuff like that. So I have to. They they come check the store. The employees that work there have to have a negative COVID test to work. So that's five bucks a pop twice for each one twice a week, and I have to pay for it. The, the other rule that they implemented is that they don't allow music at bars. Oh, you're telling me about this. And they close at 12.30. 12.30 is the curfew right now, which is going to yeah, And by the way, just, just to let everybody know, when Dimitri told me that, I'm like, <laughs> right. like wait a second. I've been to Greece. Like, it, it, things start happening at 12.30. We drink coffee that. at 12.30, right? We don't even start drinking until 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, so all the nightclubs, um, strip cho- joints, live music, they're all closed. They're, no, nobody's open because... Um, you know, you can't, there's a few that are open that are black market again, like legally, but you go at 1230 and you're locked in till 530. You can't get out. So, so they're like after hours clubs. You go in, you go at 1230, no lights, no nothing. You go inside, they close the door and you're locked in there until 530. You can leave at 530 in the morning. But the general bars, which was a little bit odd, it was a little bit unusual. You know, me and my friend Grigori went up to, to Salonica and, uh, yeah, tons of people outside. Salonika is a great town. When me and you uh, go to Greece, I'm, I'm definitely going to take you up there and visit. But um, I'm looking up at a store there. But we're at the bar, packed. I mean, it's packed. You know, people sitting around, vaping, smoking, drinking, you know, and all that. And there's no music. It just, it just felt so weird. So I asked. I asked the, the, the owner of the bar. I said, well, what's the thinking behind that? And he said, that in the memo that they got from the government, it says that when you are at a place like that and music is playing, people tend to drink more and in turn start singing the songs. And when you're singing and you're like really into the song, like more spit comes out of your mouth and it's easier to spread COVID than it is you sit there talking to somebody. It could now look, I'm no scientist. <laughs> but, I'm no scientist. And there might be some theory to that, but I just find it so weird <laughs> that this is the, like for all the things that could have done, they took away music out of the the bars. Uh, it was just weird. So, so hey, and, and I have another question now. Let me word this the correct way. Not that you would know anything about this, but have you heard from any of your friends in Greece what the situation is in the uh, the strip clubs? Uh, like, close. Not that you would know anything. Uh, yeah, they're close. Ahead. Well, I mean, I happen to know a few friends that work in that in in that industry, um, childhood friends, and uh, they're closed. They're not open. Oh, they're closed. Yeah, yeah, they're not open. They won't open because uh, who's going to go to the strip club in Greece at eight o'clock in the evening? You know, I mean, it's just not going to happen. They're all closed. They're all closed. Oh, now all those photos of the food make sense. Okay. But don't worry. <laughs> In September, buddy, when me and you go, it's, they're going to be open by then. I hope. Game on. <laughs> I hope they're going to be open by then. Um, but yeah, it was, it was just, it was just a weird, weird experience. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, while I was in Greece as well, too, I forgot to tell you this. I, uh, uh, and, and we'll, and we'll talk about the Z80 after this, but I, I just want to put something out there. We talked earlier about breaking out of the bubble of vapors, right? Which it's, it's ex- extremely important for us yeah. to reach crowds and, and it's very hard because we don't have the money. So I sat there and I thought, well, what, what triggered this idea? I will tell you what, what triggered this idea. While I was in Greece, I met with a Greek YouTuber. His YouTube name is Fruto Trella, which means crazy fruit for some reason. This guy is not a vape reviewing channel. He's not a vape. Uh, he's a vapor, but he's not. He's not a vape review channel. What he does, he does uh, motor vlogs around town. He gets on his motorcycle and drives around. He does um, um, visits to the store. He buys like groceries and stuff like that, and he tells people like what's on sale, what's forty percent off, what's buy one get one free, and stuff like that. He does. Um, um, Interviews with people in his town and all that. This is this is a picture of us uh, together having an amazing meal by the water down in Salonica. Uh, his name is Bobby. His 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 name is Bobby. So 
what, what triggered this idea is I was sitting, you know, I'm a big YouTube guy, right? Everybody knows that. So I sit there and I watch YouTube and sometimes, you know, videos pop up, suggested videos, like the viewers of this channel watch this channel. And I happen to click on one of his videos and I like it, it was funny. He's, it's like three, four minute videos. He goes to the supermarket, he buys some stuff and he comes back home and he gets on camera and he says, you know, hello, I went to the, to, you know, to a little or, you know, whatever, the supermarket. And I, today I bought, um, I had 40% off you know, condoms, whatever. So I bought condoms and they had the fruit ones. And then he said, then he says, well, you know, I really like these pizzas and they had buy one, get one free. So I bought two, right? It was just, it's just funny. The whole thing is funny. So I started watching his videos and all of a sudden in one of his videos, I see him using a blue, right? A, a blue vapor product. And he's talking to the guy, a friend of his that's smoking. And he's like, well, I quit smoking. This is so much better, blah, blah, blah. Oh, there you go. So my mind immediately says, First of all, I like his videos. I'm subscribed to him. You know, I'll super chat him every now and again, unlike, you know, what our channel gets. Uh, so so I, I, I contacted him and I said, look, I want to send you an Endura M18. You know, I want to send you a, a better pod system that's refillable. And not, I mean, if you like the blue, great. But, you know, try something new. Just, you know, very, very, just very gentle movement for me. Just trying to break into that, you know, non-vaping crowd. And at first he was concerned because he's like, well, I'm not looking for sponsorships and stuff like that. I was like, I don't want a sponsorship. I'm, I said, I'm, I just want to send you, you know, friend to friend. I just want to send you a vapor product. And, and look, sometimes, you know, good karma, what, what, what it does to you. So I sent him the M18 and he, you know, he went from a blue now to an, I sent him some liquid as well too from Liquid Puff. He fills it up and he's, he gets on camera, Phil, and you know, you know, me and you, we know when people are enjoying a vape or when they're not enjoying a vape. He gets on camera and he's literally making love to this thing. He's he's just vaping and really enjoying it, and it made my heart feel so good. I just really and, and then now he now now he gets into the vaping world and he's like, oh shit, now there's this. And then I sent him a Chroma Z. Blah. Now he's like really into the vape. Um. And my goal was to meet with him. And he said, I want to shoot a video. And, and I said, fine, I'll tell my story, how I got started and you know, what I'm doing now in life and business and all that. And my goal was, because he gets thousands of views, right? His videos get like eight to 10,000 views. Um, my goal was to reach smokers through that outlet. Through that, yeah. Meaning that this is not a channel that vape, like, like vaping channels, Vapor Watch, Vapor's Watch. This is a channel that I mean, might have some vapors that watch it, but the majority of people are just your average Joe. So maybe they see me, just a normal guy and Bobby, and we're vaping, and maybe they'll be triggered. They, maybe they'll pique their interest. And it worked. There's some people that actually watched the video and started ordering from Liquid Puff and all that. And I thought to myself, we should do... Hey, Red, thanks, man. You didn't have to super chat, really. You just, <laughs> man, thanks, man. We appreciate it. Thanks for everything we you do. do thanks, Red. Thanks. You didn't have to do that, really. You know, We were just... Buster, but we trust me we don't live off youtube um so so it worked and so now i'm thinking like i'm trying to reach twitch i'm trying to reach youtubers I, if i see somebody smoking if i see somebody vaping and trying to break out of that and i wish we'd do a little bit more of that here uh of course it requires you to give some free stuff right because how are you going to introduce yourself you're trying to help somebody else quit smoking but it really worked phil and it was it was uh it was a good idea i made a new friend Right now, I have a new friend. When we go to Salonica, we can go out and eat and have a good time and enjoy ourselves. He speaks very good English as well, too, so you wouldn't have a problem communicating with him. But at the end of the day, I saw him vaping when we went to dinner over this chroma, and he was just he was just really happy, and that made me feel good. And, you know, if I make a few bucks, why not? Yeah, well, there were a couple other things that made you feel happy when you were there, too, because you, uh, hey, easy you know, now. once again, easy. I saw it that when I was there, and you saw it again, just our products being used in, in the wild, right? Yeah, 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 a bunch of them. Uh, I was, uh, you know, just seeing a guy 60-year-old next to me using this slide, and it was just, it makes you feel good. But they, they, there's, a lot, there's a lot of that open vapor in Greece, because, you know, there's that 20-milligram nicotine cap, so you don't see a lot of pod systems. Uh, and you see a lot of dual use. Vapors will use pod systems in public now. You don't see a lot of that cloud chasing. That's kind of died, which is good. Uh, in fact, in the uh, in the new store, I'm not even putting an exhaust system, which costs a lot of money. In all the other stores, I've put exhaust systems inside, but on this one, I have not. Um, but um, what was I going to say? Yeah, it's it's a different it's a different it's a different vibe now in 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 uh, in, in Europe, I think, in general, but in Greece, it's a different vibe. Yeah. But, you know, I, 
when I was there and and I saw it for the first time, it, it was it, it's really different. It's different from going to a vape show and seeing somebody use your product, right? Um, because they know who you are there, right? Yeah. They're they're part of the vape community. They're 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 into vaping. But when you go and you see, like you said, that sixty year old guy sitting next to you who doesn't know who you are, who doesn't yeah. know who I and am, doesn't give a shit, who doesn't give a <laughs> shit, doesn't care about no. all these YouTube videos doesn't and care. these shows. All he knows is he's sitting there and he's enjoying using a product that Dimitri and I are part of, right? And he's not smoking. That's an incredible feeling. That that oh, is yes. a really really good feeling um you just said you just said the word public i want to say hello uh to the guy from Publix. i don't know if he's watching i should have gotten your name and i do apologize but the guy from Publix, um i had it's been a long time since this has happened but it happened uh, at Publix. i was at uh, the supermarket the other day and i was looking at something on, on on an end cap and i saw a guy walk by me he's got his cart walks by me and he gives me he like gives me that look right and he keeps going i'm like he knows who I am. I, I, I could already tell. I could tell by the look, by that quick glance. I'm like, this guy knows who I am. Right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? So he walks by, and I'm looking, you know, I'm looking for what I want to buy. And then I, I notice he turns his cart around, and he walks by the other way. And I'm like, now, now I definitely know that he knows who I am. And then he goes backwards with his cart, and he's like, hey, he goes, are you P. Basardo? And I said, yeah, I said, I am. I said, how you doing? And he's like, oh, my God. He goes, I, are, do you live here? Band and boy. I was like, yeah. I said, I moved from uh, upstate New York. I said, I'm down here in Florida. Now he goes, man, he goes, wow. He goes, thanks so much. He said, I learned so much about vaping from you. And he goes, I don't smoke anymore. He goes, I just really appreciate everything you do. And we, you know, he gave me that fist bump. He gave me that. I'm not sure Aww. if I can shake your hand because of COVID fist bump. I'm like, uh, yeah, I'll shake your hand, man. Right. So we shook hands and I said, I really appreciate that. I said, thank you. You know, and it's, it still makes you feel really good uh, to know that you've made a difference in people's lives um, because that's, that's why we do this. Right. I mean, uh, so to get that acknowledgement um, still out there, it, it makes you feel good about what you're doing. At least you didn't get one of these. At least he, he, he didn't oh, in, in, the, in the last video uh, I just did, I, I was saying something and I got to vapor and flavor and I just, I was like, and, <laughs> and then I stopped and I went vapor I and it. flavor. Do you got that drop there? Got it. Hold on. Let me find it. Go ahead. I got so much stuff on my, uh, on yeah, my flavor okay. and vapor. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Flavor and vapor. All right. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so that was my experience there in, in, in Greece and, uh, you know, the, the, um, uh, what was I gonna say? I am I'm, I'm taking a risk. I Greece has its own set of drama, like we do here. Obviously, you know, the more stores you open, more you know people are you know. There's just a you know a sense of jealousy and stuff like that. But I see it a little bit different. I see it as opportunity to grow my business, obviously, and have more options for smokers and stuff like that. Uh, and so I'm growing, but you know, a few people do get butt hurt when I make announcements like that, but I did sign a lease for the fourth store now. And, uh, and possibly in September when we go down, we, we, we do the grand opening together. Maybe we'll look at for a, for a fifth store. Yeah, 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 I can't yeah. stop. I can't, st I have to always do something, Phil, you know me. Yeah. What are we going to open up a shot with my name on it too? Yeah, we'll, we'll soon, soon. When vaping gets banned, <laughs> when vaping yeah. is dead. Now let, let's say hello to a few people here in the chat. Yeah, um, hold on a second. Just I a know question. Melissa joined. I want to say hi to Melissa. Uh, of course, I you owe do. her an email. I'm sure at some point. Um, Green eyed lady John Q is here. Uh, Janine, as always, she said before. Janine, she's so cool. Janine, she said. First of all, I know she. She said she misses our faces because we haven't done a show in a while. Aww, uh, and then she said before, no question, just happy you guys are back. I mean, you just got to love Janine. Uh, Pam is like here. That. Hi, Pam. And Peggy. Peggy said that she uh, she heard before that uh, there might be a vaping only show in Florida. Oh, yeah, boy. Tell me more about that. I will Nick, be or, there. Nick, Nick Orlando made a, made a post to uh, try to gather interest, but everybody that responded sells Delta 8. So uh, <laughs> then right he's on. like, well, I'm thinking I'm not going to do no Delta 8 and CB. Nobody's going to be there. Nobody's going to go. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm being completely honest with you. I mean, I, I hope it happens. I'd like to see a show back in a hotel. Like back oh, in Richmond, like the old days, instead of trying to do this big expo. Uh, uh, yeah, Kid Bass, I told Phil today that Indoor Smokers is the owner of an electric bike store. Um, I'm going to open one, too. That'd be very popular here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call it Indoor Smokers. 
<laughs> I see what I did there. Uh, but anyway, uh, so uh, but I just don't think it's going to happen. I really, I really don't know that that a show like that would gather interest in uh, in the United States. I, I just, I just, I don't. Not because vaping is dead. I just I, business wise it doesn't make any sense. Limner but, asks, but, but, "Did you but. figure out how to access the super chat treasure chest?" Last I heard, it was still a mystery. No, um, the, <laughs> when I do get to it, it's going to be like up, I'm, be, I'm figuring at least a million dollars. We are going yeah. to retire. It's, it, it's going to be somewhere between two hundred dollars and a million dollars. I'm probably more towards the two hundred, <laughs> but somewhere in that that range. Hey, Sean, I would love to. Let's do it. Um, what else did I just see? I, I love getting to the shout out. Is that wrong? No, nothing wrong with that, buddy. Uh, oh, question: What would Phil's vape shop be called? That's a great question. Mm, let me let me think about that. Let me uh, let me toss it around. Let me toss it around in the head. But you got let, we'll we'll talk and I'll think about that. Sean says Demi has done Greece. Phil needs to open up shops in Italy. <laughs> you can't speak a full lick of Italian, Sean. What is he gonna do? <laughs> we open up a shop in Italy. He can't that speak a lick. That is not true, Dimitri. You know I speak a good Italian. I don't know what you say. <laughs> I don't know what do you say. I speak a perfect Italian. Oh my God! Can you Not imagine on. Phil trying to sell vape to an Italian smoker? <laughs> He's gonna be with his hands. Oh, give me the throat. Yes. Wait, wait. Yes, uh, come, oh. come and look at look at this. Uh, it's, it's, it's the watermelon <laughs> piece, the number one, the number one selling uh, flavor in the unsalted line is delicious. Deli uh, Delicious. Uh, Fabian says, uh, I'm 45 and been watching you guys from the start. Many hours with Phil and the tech vids and such. Just wanted to say thanks, guys. Fabian, that's very nice of you. Thanks, man. We're old. Hey, we hey, we realize that. I, I have I have a video for you tomorrow. I have a video for you tomorrow that's that's techie. There's techie stuff in there. Wow. And and I'm a little bit cranky with the results that I get, too. Oh, so that's sure a must ready. tune in. Must tune in. Uh <laughs> Phil uh, Smokehole, the Phil Station. Phil yeah, Smokehole. You know I don't want to name it. You guys name it. Like, I didn't smoke give myself hole. DJ Miami. Somebody came up with that for me. So you guys named this. The, the other shot. day, I called Phil on video chat, and he's taking a dump. So that would be <laughs> Phil's <laughs> smoke hole that. was on video. <laughs> really, what it was? There was smoke coming out of his ass. Uh, <laughs> my dong, forget about it. That's what it should be called. All right, um, the Blue Oyster featuring Demi Pink Mods. That's a good. Name. That's a good name. Um, we'll think about it. We'll think about it. Uh, question from Pam. Wait, Jimmy. wait, here. I got an idea. Okay. Uh, for those of you guys who are watching the show, uh, put the name of my vape shop in the, uh, the, the comments for this video and we will pick a winner and we'll oh, send uh, that is something a great, out next week. That is a great, great idea. So comment in the video after we post it, like it and share it as well too. It really helps the algorithm. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything to do that. Like hey, and is share. Is it Limner or is it Limner? Um, but yeah, um, yeah, it's a great. Wow, idea. good for you, man! July seventh coming up. Come leave, on, how many years is it now? Let me announce the contest first. Le leave a comment in this video of what Phil's vape shop should be called, and then we'll do a drawing. We'll do a nice little Anakin package. Maybe we'll we'll give away one of the Z80s if they ever come from China. <laughs> They're stuck in the canal, but uh, maybe we we'll give them a there Z. It is. Yeah, I mean, that's a good prize. Let's give them a Z80 for uh, for whoever. It's going to be a random drawing, or if we you know pick a name or whatever, whichever we. Oh, want you know do. what we'll do? Z80 kit, Z80 kit. Yeah, I think I have enough. Do you have any? I don't, I don't have any, but they're coming. They're coming. <laughs> They've sent us some. So yeah. So uh, so you'll get your prize in uh, 2022. Uh, the True Z80 story. kit, and uh, I, I think I have some. Um, some Zenith two prototypes. How about a, a prototype is always a fun thing to have. Yeah, we'll see. We'll right? figure it out. We'll that? figure out how we're going to give it away. And you know what else I'll throw in there? A bottle of the number one best selling flavor oh, in the unsold line. Snap. The delicious watermelon oh, peach. Snap. This alone. It's this worth, alone. Worth it. Worth entering the contest. Worth the admission. Absolutely. 100%. Right. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> question from Pam. Do you get a lot of tourists in your shops? So um, Phil's been, he's seen... I, the three shops are located in the suburbs, and I have one shop, at, which ironically, um, back in uh, 2020, uh, well, I started looking in 2018 for a shop in this area. This is called Monastiraki Square. It's right in smack dab in the center of Athens and is the busiest tourist section of Greece. Uh, Phil has walked through there, tons of little gift shops. You can find souvenirs. You can find Greek folk art. You can find antiques. Uh, it's the most popular shopping district. Every tourist that comes walks through there. So for two years, I'm trying to find a shop. You can't find anything because everything is occupied or very, very expensive. 
So in December, uh, December, January last year, I find a shop there that just opened up. So I jump on it. I sign the lease in February. They start to do the build out. And in March, the entire country goes into lockdown. I, there's, not true. even the workers could go and work on it because everything was just shut down. Nobody could travel. Nobody could go out. It was just, it was really, really bad. So uh, for a year now, it's, it's been brutal. Because I've kept the employees, I've kept paying rent uh, because it's a great location. So I'm hoping this summer now, we, we did see more traffic when I was there, more traffic, more tourists are coming in. Um, but uh, I'm hoping that this year, this summer, things get back to normal because it's been, it's been very, very difficult. Ironically, what I see with tourists is, you know, you have tourists that come in and get uh, bottle liquid or, you know, they forgot their vape or they want something small, whatever, they'll buy that. However, a lot of them ask me for weed. <laughs> it's just true as well, too. Uh, which is not legal in Greece, by the way. Not even Delta Eight is legal in in really? in Greece. Um, so uh, yeah, a lot of them. Uh, Do hey. a lot of people use though there? It's it's not like here. It's it's not as prevalent as here. No. Okay. And it's very it's it's more hush hush. It's still a taboo. Okay. So it's not it's not like you know you you know it's not, it's not like here. Uh, yeah. But a lot of uh, people ask for it. Okay. Uh, first of all, Fabian, um, Fabian, you fucked that whole thing up, but I understand what you're saying. Uh, a vape shop and golf cart rentals. Okay. And uh, <laughs> that's a great idea. It wouldn't actually work where I am right here, but if I were to open that up in Boca Grande, the Boca Grande does a lot of golf cart rentals. That would be very popular there. Uh, and there was something else that I wanted to say. Oh yeah. Just a clarification for the contest, because I see a lot of people putting the, the shop names in this chat. No, 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 no. Put the shop names in the comments for the video. Yes. Okay. So you can save your time here. Don't put them here. Yes. But put somebody your might steal your idea here in the yeah. comments of the video. Right. But somebody might steal your idea here. Just wait. Wait till the video goes up, and then you can uh, post it uh, underneath there. All right. That's right. Question. Oh, 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 wait. Uh, one more thing. Hello, yeah. Ryan. Ryan just. Uh, I, I believe that's the same Ryan that just won a, uh, a contest. Uh, your prize is is ready to go. I'm gonna get it out in the mail just as soon as I can. Just like I always. Say. Is there gonna be an you insult? Know what? You know what sucks is that Ryan won a. Um, it's a relatively small prize, but he's in Canada. Uh, that right? sucks. So it's like it's one of those things where you know you win a thirty dollar prize and it costs a hundred dollars to fucking ship it. Yeah, so yeah. just to make it worth my time and yours, Ryan, what I might do is unbox what you won because the box is ridiculously huge, um, and I'll wrap it up in some plastic and maybe throw a couple other things in a smaller box for you to to make it worth That's your time nice. and my time. That's very How nice that? of you. Uh, Ryan asks, uh, is there going to be an assaulted line V two? Yes, there's going to be an ice line coming out. So there's going to be. Uh, that's all we can tell you. You know, we can't give it. Uh, it eventually, it will. As, as soon as Richard Hong sends us the samples, <laughs> which apparently are on the same boat from China, coming with the Z80 kits. Uh, but yeah, we're we're gonna launch uh, an ice uh, line, three flavors. They're gonna be cold, um, which is very very popular right now, and uh, all done with, of course, flavor art flavorings. We use exclusively flavor art flavorings for our liquids, so. We're very, very excited. Eventually, we're going to be very, very excited. And I'm going to take over the number one spot again with my flavor. Um, I hope so. Yes. God knows I'm, you know, I'm a little bit tired <laughs> carrying of carrying us. your weight You're around. carrying us. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, basically, we're, we're carrying tiny lips is what I we should say. Yeah, 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 you, no, but true. that's all right. We it's like true. him. We like him. Taste my crab juice. No, no raincoats allowed. That's good. Uh, all right. Uh, another question. Uh, where was it? Uh, no. Okay, so uh, lastly, uh, we have an announcement to make this this Wednesday. No, no, excuse me, this Thursday, is it June tenth. Yeah, June tenth. Yeah. I, I had to double check at sure. eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> fuck my life. Uh, at eight o'clock. By by the way, listen. Just today, somebody posted on my face. I think it was Angela. <laughs> I love you, Angela. Angela says at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Look, <laughs> it's it, you have to understand that we we don't sell Anakin just in the United States. In fact, the United States is a very very small market for our products. Unfortunately, it's unfortunate, but that's the reality. But most of our products are sold Europe, Indonesia, Russia, Canada, just all over the world. So we have to pick a time that. Most of our markets can watch. And obviously in Europe, it's going to be between 1 and 5 o'clock in the afternoon, depending on the time zone that you're going to be in. So uh, we're not arranging this. This is Anakin's thing, right? But um, uh, we're going to broadcast it on, on Phil's YouTube channel. So you're going to see it live here. You're going to see it live on Facebook. 
And you're going to see it live on Anakin Technologies, Facebook, and uh, Instagram, and excuse me, and YouTube. So 8 o'clock this, uh, this uh, Thursday, June 10th, uh, we are going to be giving away six uh, of the kits with your own name on them engraved, uh, which is pretty cool. And, you know, we'll get to talk about in detail in the, for the product that, that we are launching. There is a little... Uh, there's a little teaser here that I want to play, and this is uh, this is what they've done so far. I actually did this, did this in in uh, in, uh, in Greece while I was there. But anyway, here, take a look. Yes, he is. He's talking about the tank, isn't he? Yep. That's right. The King is back. The all-new Inikin Platform Series Zenith 2, available June 10th as both a standalone tank and part of a new exciting kit. And we hope you love it just as much as we do. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know, when I... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I got a couple funny stories. So that's all we're going to talk about, right? I mean, we're not going to go into detail about the product. Yeah. We got a little bit of time left here. A couple funny stories. So first of all, I get the video from Dimitri, right? And Dimitri, he's standing in front of his shop. He's like, okay. He goes, this is what we're going to do. He goes, I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to go like this. And then you're going to slide your part into it, and then you're going to do something funny, and then that's the way it's going to go. I'm thinking to myself, no fucking shit. But like, oh, what is this, my first rodeo? So now I'm thinking to myself, I, I'm like, I got to do something funny. I got to be me. I got to do something funny. So begins the the quest, the quest to find a crown for the video and I'm driving all over town. Finally, I found one at party city. Uh, I thought I was going to have to wait like another day and order one from Amazon, but that, that's, that's um, story. Number one, here's story. Number two. Uh, I heard Dimitri just say before, did you hear him say uh, when he was talking about the, uh, the eight uh, AM uh, conference uh, show that we're doing 8 AM. And he said, fuck my life. You remember when he said that fuck my life. Okay. Yes. Let me tell you a little story here. So the other day <laughs> we had to do a, um, a conference call and the conference call, between this is an interesting one. <laughs> this is interesting. Florida, Greece, France, and China. In China, yeah. Guess who got the shitty end of the <laughs> stick? Me. Six a.m. Fuck him in his eight a.m. Six a.m. Do you guys know that there's no sun at six o'clock in the morning? <laughs> I had no idea. But that's a stupid time to wake up in the morning. Six a.m. Right. That's funny. So I get up at five. Because there's things I got to do. You know, I got to go to the bathroom. I got to get in the shower. I got to do the whole shaving thing. It, it's a whole process, right? So, and and at exactly 6 o'clock, there I am on the conference call. There I am. And nobody else. <laughs> eventually, uh, Fran showed up. Some of them. And then eventually, China showed up. They were there. No, Dimitri. <laughs> and it's not, it, I think it was 1 p.m. for you? It was 1 p.m., yeah. I was in the car PM. driving. I was in the car and driving. And I'm thinking to myself, you bastard. You, here I am, absolutely on the dot, 6 o'clock. No, Dimitri. Yeah. Right? So I start WeChat. I'm like, uh, the call, right? Now, then I, I phone him on WeChat. I'm like, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. And then here he comes, and he's driving his car. I'm guessing that he forgot about it. No, That's no, what I'm no, thinking. No. He forgot about it. All right? So he's driving his car. He's somewhat involved in, in the call. I'm not driving. Involved. I was in the passenger seat. Oh, you were in the passenger seat? Yeah. Okay. Then he gets out of his car, and he's in one of the Greek bakeries. <laughs> he's doing the conference call from one of the Greek bakeries. And it's not even him that we're looking at. We're looking at the <laughs> baked goods. And coffee. <laughs> And the coffee in the, the bakery. <laughs> this is his version it's true, it's of true. a conference call it was and I, that I had to be up at 6 a.m. for. So then he gets his stuff and he goes back to Dimitri's face 
and he's eating, he's eating the bakery products. <laughs> it was delicious. So, yeah, but yeah, it, it was. It did. It looked very good. It looked very. Go fuck yourself. But it it's looked true. It's true. very good. <laughs> Son of a bitch. So what happened is I was I was going to the Saloniki. It's a four hour drive, and I had planned to stop at the rest stop, get gas, and switch to Grigori driving, and then that. Oh, it was Grigori. Yeah. Okay. So what happened is we stopped at the gas station. And Grigori took o- filled up with gas. Grigori took over the car, and then we stopped at the bakery, uh, so you know I can I can pay attention more to the call. But mostly we stopped to get something to eat and uh, and have a cup of coffee. Uh, so that's uh, but it all worked out at the end. We, I think we accomplished a lot in that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We 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 solved world problems. We solved meeting. world really problems. Did. But anyway, yeah. So back to the technology and in, in what Sean was asking. Look, if you if you have a census or you ta- learn about the census. Uh, this is what this is. I mean, keep in mind that Fourier technology is a new board that we put out with Inakin. The new technology that we put out with Inakin, and moving forward, a lot of devices are going to have this board in it. And and you can go look at Phil's video where he explains in great detail and very very good to people that are not technical like me what exactly this technology does and how the wavelength works and you know the hertz and all that stuff. Right, and that's ah. going to be in the uh, the census intro- introduction video that I did. Yes, in census case introduction. Wrong. It's on his, on his YouTube channel. But uh, obviously, people are asking for devices with a replaceable battery, bigger battery, bigger wattage, and so, so they can try the technology a lot. So, to in in all fairness to Inigen, the way that they released this, this was a really good idea, in my opinion, in a market that was dominated by pod mods, it made more sense to release this technology in a new pod mod. So that's why they released the, that device. Not that there's anything special about that pod mod. Well, it does have a glass tank. It does have a few things that are different, but it's just another pod mod. But the board that's in there was kind of like, let's just put it out there. Let's pe- let people start using it, playing around with the frequencies, playing around with the, the refresh uh, feature and see uh, how they respond and start getting some feedback. And then the next device that we're going to release was going to be planned to be part of the Zenith 2. So this next device is going to be an 18650 device. And then eventually you might see some bigger batteries and stuff like that. There's more stuff coming in the pipeline. But this particular kit that's coming out is basically giving you, A, the replaceable battery that people are asking, the same board as the census, so you can play around with a few tweaks based on customer feedback that we got. Uh, but it's the same board. You can play around with the frequencies and, and fine-tune your vape. And in a kit, it will be paired with the Zenith 2 which again, I promise you, uh, like everything that we've done uh, with Phil uh, while we've been with Inakin since 2017, is listen to feedback, is listen to what the c- consumer says. The Zenith is probably one of the best-selling tanks that Inakin has had. It's We've sold a lot. I mean, a lot of tanks. Uh, not so many in the United States, uh, and unfortunately, Nick does not like it, but the the that the, the has not slowed down the sales of this product. It's sold a lot. It's it, It's been on the market for four years. <laughs> four years. I mean... You see a lot of these products that come out now and they're, you know, hyped up for two or three months and then the next product comes out and it's done. But this consistently has sold well. So all we had to do is with the Zenith 2 is A, in my opinion, make it sexier. I think that was our number one goal uh, once once we, we decided last year to make the Zenith 2. That's how long it's taken. Make it sexier. And then two, listen to the people that have used it, what they would want on there. And we try to implement those features uh, on the new Zenith 2 tank to make it, you know, even better than the original for people that that use the tank and want to see it a little bit. So we paired it together. It made this kit, so it gives you the opportunity to try the Zenith tank, which is compatible with all the Z coils, of course, and it accommodates the new 0.3 ohm coil, which is selling very, very well. In restricted direct lung, it's the only coil that I use. I love the flavor and I love the way that it vapes, so it accommodates that as well too. Yeah, a couple of things there. Um, so first of all, you know, why is Inakin calling this the fourth generation? So they, the, the way they see it, they're considering uh, the first generation being adjustability in voltage, the second uh, generation being the adjustability in wattage, the third generation being temperature control, and now the fourth generation being what they're calling the Fourier technology, which is basically an AC signal versus a DC signal. The purpose of the AC signal, make your coils last a little bit, a little bit 
bit longer and bring out some additional flavor in your liquids. Uh, from everything that I've read, uh, people seem to be enjoying it. You can join um, the what do they call it? What's the Find the, F um, Find F Club? The Find F the Find F group on on Facebook, uh, and you can interact with other users that are using the de the device and and kind of sharing ideas on the frequencies and the frequencies that they're using. Um, so th that's why they're calling it the fourth generation. The purpose of, again, of that AC signal versus the DC signal is to vibrate the coil a little bit um, and to prevent particles, uh, as much as possible, prevent particles from sticking to the coil. Um, now, what I've noticed is I've seen anywhere from a 10% to a 50% increase in coil life when using the technology. And although when I switch over to the technology, I don't notice a flavor difference. What I notice is a flavor difference over time because my coil is lasting longer uh, and therefore, or therefore the flavor continues to be good for longer than if I was using standard water. So that's, that's just what, what I've noticed with the technology. That's number one. Number two, um, I actually got some interesting, uh, texts from, uh, Daniel today, DJ LSB, because he was, uh, doing the video for, uh, the package, right. Uh, for the kit, for the new, uh, Z80 kit and the, um, and the, uh, the Zenith two. So he was asking me some questions about the Zenith two. Uh, he wanted to know if the Zenith 2 was a platform product. Yes, the Zenith 2 is a platform product. He wanted to know if the Z80 was a platform product. That's not. That's an Inikin product. So they have uh, – th that's why they're saying we combine the best of, of, of the two things, uh, the Zenith 2 and the new Z80 uh, device. But he was he, – and he basically nailed it. He goes, I, I feel like this is a – uh, like like the Zenith and the Zenith Pro had a baby, and it's the Zenith 2. And I said, you, you pretty much nailed it, really, because the Zenith 2 is kind of a combination of the original Zenith, the Zenith Pro, and the cost-effectiveness of the Zlide, right? So it, it borrows some features from the Zenith 2 or the Zenith Pro, which is going to be a more open airflow for restricted direct lung uh, and the ability to change your glass. But it, instead of having those features and costing more like the Zenith Pro, uh, it has some of those features and costs less like the Zlide. So that's why it's, I say it's kind of a marriage of the three tanks together uh, giving you this one. Uh, the, there, there is more airflow, and he agreed with me when I, when I told him about the airflow. Uh, there's definitely more airflow for a more open restricted direct lung, and even the mouth to lung is a lot smoother on the tank. And I think that's probably all we can say about it without showing it. So Yeah, and there's not really much else that you can – I mean, the tank has been solid all these years. We're just trying to tweak a few things. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, I Phil did a really good representation of the, um, of the, uh, the, the te technology in his video. I'm going to give you my, uh, my non-technical. Uh, when you vape with the fourth-generation technology, your coil does this. <laughs> That's exactly what happens to your coil when you vape with uh, with the four. No, no, wait a second. I uh, I did the dog shaking too. <laughs> By the way, I, I love when uh, well, like JJ comes in at ten minutes before <laughs> know, the show's over too, and was, asks yeah. why is vaping dead. I was not going to make a comment, but since you want to, go ahead and blast him. Okay, I did. All you. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so so yeah, I mean, the, the capacity on this tank is going to be four and a half mils on the big one, and it's going to be two mL, of course, obviously for the uh, for the TVD. Which again, no, I, I, no, I, no, I, I, it's no. not. Five and a half. Five and a half. Excuse me. Five and a half and two mils. But here's 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 what I've noticed lately, and uh, I know Craig is gonna uh, freak out when he hear this. Um, I keep seeing posts in the Anakin F Find F Club about the two mL capacity of the census in the UK. There's nothing we can do. It's the law. <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't know what to tell you. You know, I mean, if there's a way for you to order from China or to get a bigger capacity, that's fine. But legally, we cannot sell in the UK more than two mL. That's just what the law. And they had to put a bung inside. That's just what you have to do when you're going through distributors to keep a legal product that's been applied for on the TPD. That's just. I don't understand how people are just now figuring this out. When the law was being passed, well, you voted for that Brexit pretty damn quick. When the law was being passed for the two MLs, <laughs> where were you then for crying out loud? You know what I'm saying? Oh, no. Oh, no. The Inican police has joined us. Uh-oh. Inican technology. Oh, who, who do you think that is? That's got to be Florian. It's you think it's be. Florian? Absolutely. I think sure? he, I think he liked my gif. You think so? Yeah. You want me to play it again, Florian? He's in China. Yeah, he, yeah. Doesn't, he doesn't see yeah, this. Yeah. Uh, hold on. I got I to gotta reload it. So when you press the button... Press the button. 
Press what what button? This is what happens to your coil right here. That's, okay. Oh yeah, I, I know. What you're, okay, that yeah. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what happens. That's to your it. Coil. That's exactly what that's happens to little, the coil. A little shimmy. Just like up, yeah. down, oh, left, right. That's very good. Up, down, left. That right. yeah. Th by the way. I can watch that all that, day. That is a good tasting coil right <laughs> That's there. That's a good tasting coil. Yes. Fresh. Okay. Fresh. Fresh. We're all very curious. Uh, Inigan Technology, who are you? It's Florian. It's got to be Florian. You think so? Yeah. Hmm. Could be Joseph. Uh, it could be. I'm I'm hedging my bets. It's Florian. Okay. Uh, we'll so, so yeah. We're, we're going to talk about everything uh, June 10th during the Inigan uh, special event live. And I will be rebroadcasting it right here on Phil's YouTube channel uh, and on uh, Facebook as well, too. So if you miss it, you can come back and watch it. And by the way, uh, whoever Inigan Technology is, ha ha, how did you know? Oh, Florian, okay. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, I Florian, you. listen, I just want you to know that this is how I've been vaping it, like this. Because 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 the me too, me we too. can't show it. Wait, everybody like, else, it's, everybody it's else is showing it. By the internet, way. It, like, pretty much everybody's seen it, but but we're not showing it. Planet of the Vapes has a whole spread on it. Every <laughs> every Chinese trading site has posted it on there. I've seen it in Greek Facebook groups. I've seen it everywhere, but we can't yeah. show it. So we, we have to stealth it. it. We have to like hide it to vape it. That's right. But look, I'm very very happy. One thing that we're I will tell players. you, I'm gonna tell you. Uh, here's a little sneak peek. I will tell you. You know, me and Phil are MTLers. That's our specialty. And um, what we wanted to do, nothing wrong with the Zenith and the slide and all that, but we wanted to do, and we figured out a way of doing it, is making the MTL draw a little bit smoother and a little bit quieter. And we accomplished it on this. The MTL draw on this tank is smooth, like Phil's shaved butt. It is smooth. I mean smooth, baby. That's it smooth, is guys. That smooth. Is, Silk. Uh, is. So I'm very, very happy about that. But it also gives you the option. It's very hard to try to do two things good in a tank. Usually it does like very good MTL or it does very good RDL. It does, but we were able to get that RDL and the MTL perfect for this tank, which is a very, very rare accomplishment. So if you like the RDL with a 0.3 ohm, which is how I'm using it in the Chroma Z, then you have a tank to do that as well, too, because all the coils are compatible. Uh, yes. Anything else that you want to bring up about uh, about the, the launch? Oh, when they're going to be available. Uh, June 10th is the official launch day. I'm expecting it to hit you know, distributors in the next week. By the end of the month, it should be available on websites. Oh, and we've got a very, very special surprise coming up with Vapor DNA, if I'm not mistaken. We're going to do a live show here announcing a code as soon as Vapor DNA gets these products and has them live on their website. Tune into the show here. It's going to be a DP or smokers or whatever. Actually, two. So we're going to do a show for Vapor DNA because they are giving us a code. And I yes. believe we're going to do a show for my Vapor Store because they are going to give us a code as well. Great. Right. So we'll do right. them both here. I mean, I'm not sure okay. about that, but I'm sure about Vapor DNA. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, a couple other things too. On that same day, on the 10th, uh, after after the eight o'clock in the morning show, uh, we're going to do another show uh, with uh, One Shot Media, our friend David uh, from France. Right. But that is going to be a fun show. That is a show that I recommend that you watch. I mean, I recommend that you watch both of the shows, but yeah. we have already agreed because the last time we went on One Shot, it was a little bit dry. Would you not say? Would you not agree yes, that was a yes. little bit? Dry? It was a little bit more. It was a little bit more formal. Yeah. yeah. So this show, it's going to be uh, off the deep end. There yes. is going to be drinking on the show. So yes. we are going to be introducing the uh, the technology to the French market. Uh, we're going to be talking. The the whole show is going to be in English. He might do some translation, but then we're going to do another show with just the French team. That's going to do kind of a group interview and we're or a group review of the device. Yes. But on the tenth in the afternoon again. Uh, we're going to go on with uh, David from One Shot, and it's going to be a drinking show, and we're going to talk about the technology. We're going to introduce it, but we're also going to do some fun stuff, and we're going to talk about some advocacy and the state of vape in the U.S. So I, I have a feeling that that show is going to be a lot of fun, and I'm probably going to need uh, some recovery time. Yeah, and, and also, look, if you, uh, to, to wrap up the, 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 the Z80, the, the Z80 technology obviously goes to 80 watts, whatever. It, it, I think... Once again, in Europe, there's a, these products are sold as starter kits. 
I mean, this is what we recommend people starting off with. You got an easy tank, easy to feel, easy to use device, press the button and vape. And open vapor devices is what we suggest, obviously, there. So we use it as a target. If you're an MTLer, you're going to enjoy it. You can put any tank on there, a rebuildable, whatever, and you're going to be able to vape it with this technology on an 1860 510 device up to 80 watts. There's going to be higher watts devices coming in the future. But for somebody that is looking to start off vaping, if they want to get past the pod and go to a device, this is, a, again, what our specialty is. Um, it's going to have the QR code inside. It's going to have the uh, tutorial videos that Phil does for all of our products, uh, for the tank and for the kit. This is what you get. This is how you're going to use it, maintain it, clean it, uh, vape it, and enjoy it. All that's going to be done with it. So that's obviously has been the platform series, um, you know, uh, product strategy. So we're going to stick with that. Uh, Fox uh, Papuli says, can you make Phil's butt quiet? By the way, it's, you know what's ironic about that question? Papuli Careful. in Greece is a very proper way of saying butt. Is it really? Yeah. So, popos. Oh, that's an ironic question. It's a very, by, from Populi uh, yeah. because it's talking about your butt. Uh, Listen, I would like to, because I just moved my, uh, my Google Home over here because you know I'm into home automation. Yeah. Right? So I, you know, I, I have a lot of uh, routines set and, uh, you know, when I take a shower, I have a routine and when I'm done with my shower, I have a routine and I would like to share with you, uh, what Google says, uh, when I'm done with my shower, if you don't mind, I'll just sure. move the microphone over here, sure. uh, angle this down a little bit if I okay. can sure. and I'll say like, Hey Google, I'm done with my shower. I'm happy you are so fresh and so clean and are smooth like a baby's butt. See? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, right? yeah. At low frequencies, it <laughs> sounds like Phil Busardo's butt, says Marshall Keith. Yes, absolutely. It does It does have a little hum on, depending on the frequency, depending on the coil as well, too. Uh, but yeah, but what was I going to say? Popos is butt in Greek. It's a, it's a good way of saying butt, like a very polite way of saying butt. Populis yeah. means small butt. So Fox Small Butt says, can you make Phil's butt quiet? <laughs> that was fun. Anyway, we've said it all. Tune in Thursday. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. Me, Phil, Tony, Florian. Do you, want, do you want to answer arbitrary or no? What's the question? I'm confused. Uh, I you, thought you couldn't release new products after the PMTA deadline. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, you're not supposed to, but everybody's doing it. So yeah, <laughs> that's not, my not answer. Not to mention that our products are sold all over the world, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. This is not just a U.S. Uh, based product. It is that international. Is 29 countries and counting. Very, very proud of you, Phil. I'm very, very proud of you, buddy. You're proud of me? Yes. 29 you countries. Proud of, your products. I'm proud of both of us. Your products that have your name on them in 29 countries. Well, who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk, thunk it, buddy? But very, your very, name very. is right alongside of mine. And I'm, as I'm, you I'm like second to, to you. Your, your name is first. Designed by P. Busardo. Vaping Greek. Your name is first, always. Yep. Yeah, but, but you. By also the way, like that was a requirement. <laughs> you also like to say how much better your uh, your signature is. Than My mine. signature is X year. It is. It really it is. is. It is. And I thought you were going to stop talking about that because Dave's signature was uh, worse than mine. Yeah, I, I was, but now I'm back on you. Uh, <laughs> Papuli says now this name is completely inappropriate. Do you have a big butt? Is that what's that funny? Uh, anyway, that's fine. <laughs> that was funny. Keep on keeping on, says Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. We appreciate Thank you, it. Melissa. My favorite store in Vibradania don't ship to Where's New York. Where's Melissa located? Let's go do a show in Melissa's uh, town. Sure. Yeah. Let's, go Let's do go. it in our house. I don't care. Yeah, okay. There's going to be a big vape show in Melissa's house. Yeah. We'll let you know the there. address. Let's do, it. Let's do it. No, just me, you, and Melissa. We don't need any oh. more people. We'll have, a, <laughs> we'll have a jolly old time. All right. How about me, you, and Melissa, and you stay in the car? <laughs> no, it's cold. That it's cold outside. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm sorry that that they don't ship to New York. I, again, those are not decisions that we make. We just follow whatever the, our boss tells us, and our boss is Inikin. So um, I hope we find somebody that ships to New York and are able to help you. I know that there's some Indian reservations in New York that are carrying a lot of vapor products. Maybe you'll be able to find it there. They sell flavored liquid as well too, and the government can't do nothing about it. Well, what about those Chinese companies? They ship still, don't they? Yeah, sure. I mean, you can order like from 3F. 3F and, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you'll have to wait. You know, you know, it's just taking a even for our our our, <laughs> our our products with our name have not come yet. We only have a few prototypes that they send us at the beginning, and we we don't actually have the final packaging in our hands right now. It, it's it, in. It's kind of. It's true. <laughs> so Anakin sends me a message that like, like Phil, we need the tutorial videos, <laughs> absolutely, and I'm like Anakin. 
I need the device before I do the <laughs> tutorial videos. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, uh, Borscope says, uh, Demi and Phil, been many years since I got the opportunity to meet you, the both of you in London. I'm glad to see you both still together, ripping on each other. Thanks, man. We appreciate that. That's very nice of you. And uh, always, that's a good times. Good times in London, especially the first shows were a lot of fun for us. We we really had a great time. Um, by, by the way, if you order the the Z80 now from either of those uh, Chinese companies, from Fast Tech or uh, from 3F Vape, you will get it in time for the uh, the Z160. Uh, <laughs> yes, come out. for sure. Pre-order now, yes. so you get it. Uh, you know when it mm -hmm. when it comes out. But nothing we can do about it. I mean, I can't do nothing about New York, or you know, I can't. I mean, I wish I could. I wish I could. Uh, maybe take a road trip down to Tennessee. I can guarantee you there's two or three uh, shops here that are going to have them. Uh, maybe on your way to Florida, stop in Tennessee and uh, pick it up from here. Uh, yeah, Cuomo is, uh, oh my God. Melissa said, party sounds great, Addy. But when I read it, I, I thought it said, party sounds great, daddy. <laughs> I was like, damn. This oh, she did. She this, just, just called me daddy? <laughs> She just forgot the D. She's, no, okay. she's talking to Addie Tooney. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, all right, we've said it all. I know it's been a while since we did a show, but uh, yep. it was, uh, you know, it's it's yep. it's what it, it is. What it is. I'll be uh, I'll be here for a while. I've got to. Oh, my daughter Lena is in national dance competition this year. First time ever. She's been dancing for eleven years. She's always done regionals, and. Uh, uh, last year they were going to do it, but due to COVID, it got it got uh, it got canceled. But this year, uh, she's been invited. She's she's doing. This was her first year doing a dancing for eleven years with a troupe, but this year she decided to do a solo dance too. So she's doing a solo dance. She's doing her jazz number with her troupe, and then the big uh, thing with the the entire school. Uh, both her solo and her uh, troupe uh, have been invited to nationals. So she's very, very excited to dance them both. It's going to be up in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. So that's awesome. That's going to be 22nd through the 20, 22nd through the 20, 21st through the 25th, I think, like four or five. But it's on a Tuesday that we leave, so we're not going to do a show that week. But, that's uh, awesome. I remember very, very uh, excited. sitting through, through many of my, my niece's dance recitals. And, you know, from when she was like, you know, four where it's not much of a dance recital to, yeah. to when to when they graduate and you see the progression and it's really yeah, kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. So congratulations to you on that. So so like Dimitri was saying, next Tuesday we will have a show. The DP. Tuesday after that, maybe I'll do something with Mooch. I'm going to get, get a hold of him uh, because he did some testing uh, for me behind the scenes. So yeah. maybe that'll happen. I don't know. We'll see. And the show you did with Daniel was really good as well too. I mean, it's it's it when and when there's times I'm going to have some traveling coming up. I got to go to Dallas to one of my clients in July. Then, you know, obviously September and October is going to be looking rough, especially if we go to China in November as well, too. So September will be in Greece. October, we're probably going to be in Italy and Rome. I mean, Italy, Italy and Rome, Italy and France. And then uh, if, if China opens up in October, as they have announced, they will, at some point we're going to go to China as well, too. So, yeah. But anyway, please, we'll, uh, we'll try to get please, as many shows as we can. Please let me handle uh, the Italian geography because yeah, it's yes, much yes. better. <laughs> Much We're going to do a travel that. vlog. We we are going to start doing this consistently on every trip, uh, just like we did back in the in, in when we were traveling a lot. And now we're going to start traveling again. We're going to be doing travel vlogs. Everybody's doing it. Phil, let me tell you something. Tony B, <laughs> <laughs> Tony B is doing a cooking channel. Uh, Mike uh, Vapes is doing a Mike Life uh, channel, um, like detailing and cars and stuff like that. It, I mean, it's... it's it, 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 we're joking vaping is dead, but you can see that the interest in vaping, at least from YouTube, has dropped. It's hard to get products. It takes too long to get products. There's not a lot of new products being released. Uh, general numbers you, are down. are way down. Way down for everybody. Uh, so we're, we're seeing a lot of that, uh, That uh, you know, indoor smokers doing electric bikes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can I can imagine I can imagine indoor smokers uh, smoking a doobie while riding an electric bike. Let's open and a sex shop. Let's open na, a. Um, na, 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 na. What, what can we open that'd be fun? Sex shop. Sex shop. But anyway, we're all gonna be holding these signs up uh, here pretty soon. I'm joking, JJ. Go look at the beginning of the show, brother. Yeah, we didn't mean anything about that, JJ. Don't, Don't apologize. Know. Vaping is not dead. Freedom is, man. You said that right, man. Boy, Absolutely. ain't that the truth. Hey, the ain't that the truth. 360 video travel. Log. Yeah, and I got a 360 camera. Phil's got a bunch of equipment, too, that he's bought. So I got the hat cam. There's, it's going to be some funny stuff. We're, we're going to do you it. Know, it's been so long 
I, like I literally have to blow the dust off the uh, the travel gear, right? And kind of re-inventory and figure out what I got, what's old, what's new. Because I got yeah, some man. new gear, right? Yeah, yeah. And, very, and you know what's exciting. what's sad is that since I got this phone, yeah, I've I've been using this for everything. Yeah, it's great. great I mean, camera. even for the for the for the shots in the video, do they take this thing takes better photos than than some of the cameras that I bought? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, the cameras are just coming. By the way, I oh. bought you know you know I'm a camera junkie. Right? I mean a phone junkie. So I bought I bought a Huawei P40 Pro. Um, but in between the P40 Pro and the Galaxy S21, I bought a Vivo X60 because I saw this phone. Uh, dual SIM phone because you know I use dual SIM phones because I have my Greek SIM and my American SIM. Uh, this Vivo X60 is from China. It's kind of like a Huawei type deal. It's a Chinese phone. The camera has a gimbal built into it on a cell really? phone. Really? So when you're when you're walking, you look at the ca- at the phone camera and it's moving with you. So instead of having a gimbal. Like, you know, an entire gimbal to put... So it's a physical gimbal? It's not an electronic... It's not... The like, camera has a gimbal housing in it. I always knew... I knew it was a matter of time before yeah. that happened in a cell phone. It was only a matter of time. Yeah. But anyway, I give yeah, it to a friend. You know what? Make that... Dimitri, make that happen for next Tuesday show if you can. Smoothie says, uh, what happened to Russ? Let's get Russ on the show next Tuesday. <sighs> I don't know, man. Nobody knows who Russ is. I mean, except Smoothie. <laughs> except, except Smoothie. I don't know. I'll reach out. I'll see. Okay. I'll see. But you know, Vapa Russ is going to come on and say and, and and pretty much offend every vapor. That's out there, so pretty oh, much, pretty much. We're going to get views though, that's for sure. Um, but anyway, yeah, we'll see. Indoor smokers designed his own line of bikes and had them built in China. That's a good idea. I mean, he's got the connections. Why not? Um, uh, pa- yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Pam, I highly recommend. It's a great it. phone. I, I'm going to tell you what I didn't like about it, Pam. And, you know, I'm, I'm a cell phone junkie. I want the latest and the greatest. I'm going to tell you what I didn't like about it. It's big and it's heavy. It's big and it's heavy. Other than that, the cameras on it are amazing. Um, the best camera phone on the market today is the S21 Ultra. It has to be the Ultra. But me, I, I went in, when I was in Greece, I went and bought the, um, the Huawei P40 Pro, <laughs> which I was wanted to get in China. And now... The P50 is coming out, so eventually when I go to China, I'm going to get the P50. But I got the Huawei, the Huawei P40 Pro, and I sold the, I sold the Galaxy. You know what's funny is that you say you don't like it because it's big and it's heavy? Yeah. Uh, I like to carry at least one thing that's big and heavy around yeah, me. I know, I know. That's it. But, but you're, not, you're never on your phone, Phil. That's the difference. I'm on my phone constantly. You, you don't, it takes you fucking 18 hours to respond to my message. But, but what I'm saying is that you don't use the phone like I do. I use the phone constantly. No, so, so having that big, bulky thing to me and a heavy thing, was, it was just uncomfortable. Uh, and I don't take a lot of pictures like, like you do. You know? so, so for me, I, I, at the Vivo X60, I sold it in Greece to a friend. And the uh, Galaxy S21, I gave it to my wife's friend in Greece. And do, you, do you like the Huawei uh, more than the, uh, the Galaxy? I love the operating system of the Huawei P44. I love the smoothness. I love the shape, the size, the back. I love everything about that phone. I love everything. Is that the one that has the proprietary operating system and not Android? I had to hack it to put uh, Google in. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't come with Google. So yeah, but, yeah but is it an Android? Because I thought Huawei, Huawei whatever the fuck. It has its own is. operating system. Yeah. It's okay. called uh, yeah. Emui, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, but anyway, I, I love I love Huawei phones. I don't know why they're banned here, but I don't know as a NSA Homeland Security or whatever it is. But uh, but I, I really enjoy it. I like it. And the Vivo X60, I liked it, but I, I don't I didn't like it as much as the uh, the the Huawei. There you go. That's my that's my. I'm gonna start that. I'm gonna start Huawei. Demi cell phone reviews. That's what I'm gonna oh, do. There you go. There's there tons go. of them, and I follow a bunch of YouTubers. The best YouTubers, a lot of them are paid are Indian. Indians in cell phones, obsession. So I try to find the ones that are English speaking. But here's, a, I told you this, didn't I? Or uh, we're on a show with India when I, when I mentioned it. Indian reviewers, they mix English and Hindu. I think that's what it's called, Hindu, right? The language. Uh, so you're sitting there watching, and, and they start talking, and they're like, oh, yeah. This is, and then they go, bruh, bruh, and I'm like, what the fuck did he say? So that wasn't English. Uh, but anyway, yeah. That's not here. Yo, oh, you know what would be fun? So you can review cell phones, mm-hmm. and you know what we both could review? What? Let's contact indoor smokers, and he could send us his electronic bikes. Dude, that's a good idea. Isn't that a great idea? We can review the phones on the electric bike. <gasps> oh, my God. That's that's a double whammy right that's there. That's a great story. That's good. Yeah, well, yeah. so if anybody knows uh, indoor smokers, get a hold of them. 
and let him know that yeah. uh, we want to review his bikes. That'd be a lot of fun. I bike a lot. Smooth says just use his uh, his uh, things. There, there we go. are flavor and vapor on the internet who like to talk shit. There are just jerks. Yeah. So anyway, not here, not there. Uh, let me go back here where I have the music. Okay, not here or there, but yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll get. We look. We've talked about a lot of times with Phil of doing other stuff, but you know, honestly, we came on here to do vape stuff, and uh, once we exit the vaping industry at some point, when we retire from that, maybe we'll exp explore it then. I just, I just think now, you know, YouTube takes a lot. It, it, YouTube has to be your job. We can't do the stuff that we do and maintain a YouTube channel. The way that we travel, our multiple uh, employments, and you just can't dedicate the time today to compete, let's say, in the YouTube world if that's what you want to do, if you don't dedicate 8 to 10 hours a day to YouTube. So uh, Phil's, Phil's not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's true. I mean, it, 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 you... So a lot of people think it's, it's easy. You just go on YouTube and you just make a million dollars, right? But I mean, even the even the simplest of channels, even those guys that are that are gaming and, and making tons of money, I mean, you still have to be dedicated to it. You still have to spend yeah. a lot of time with it. You still have to, and like key on YouTube now is content, 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 content. I like yeah. I see guys putting out two, three videos a day, right? So it does become your own life and you do have to hump to, uh, to, to make it happen and to be successful with it. Uh, but you know, you, if you, if you are successful, if you've got that personality, if you've got that niche, if you do get, uh, you know, you get yourself established, you get to that point where you're just you, the, the guy in front of the camera and the, you got like a crew that's doing yeah. all the shooting. That's doing all the editing for you. Cameraman, you know, man, would, editor. Like, yeah. you, imagine how much content that that I would be able to put out if if we had that kind of a crew, right? If I had somebody testing the device and writing all my, creating all my charts, and the only thing I had to do was say, "Hey, folks, Pete Basardo, and this is what I'm looking at today," and that's it. And then I could just kind of walk away, and I got somebody, you know, doing all the work. But that that's not going to happen. Yeah, Demi 1968 says, uh, He's asking if I have a store in Greece. Yes, it's called Liquid <laughs> Puff. Liquidpuff.gr. Uh, so uh, just a comment from Fox, a uh, little butt, Fox Populi. Uh, <laughs> good to see you guys still going strong. You guys helped me switch off of smoking eight years ago, and now for the last three years I've been in the industry helping people make the change. I'm the American dream, buddy. The American dream. Uh, but in all seriousness, I, you know, every time I tell my story, especially when I was in Greece now, I did a few interviews and we talked about this. If it wasn't for YouTube, me and Phil wouldn't be here. I mean, this is what launched us in this industry. It all started from YouTube back in this, you know, naive virgin territory of electronic cigarettes in 2010, 2011. So we owe it to YouTube. We met through YouTube, right? So uh, we met all of you guys. Uh, you've been, you've become our friends and the industry has been our friends thanks to YouTube. If it wasn't for that medium, we wouldn't be here. So yeah, it absolutely can so change true. your life, but you know, uh, it, it becomes a quickly a full-time job. And then you have to make a decision uh, do you want to do this for a living? Which me and Phil decided that we don't want to do that for a living. Phil does videos now. Obviously, you can tell by how often he uploads videos. He does videos because he likes to do videos. Um, uh, and whenever he can. He's not tied to, I have to do a video, put three, four videos out. You know, right. to, to, to. Now, there's a little detriment to that is that you, you don't stay as relevant as you did uh, when we were putting out four, four, you know, three, four videos a week. It's, it's, a, it's a different game, uh, but we're you know we're fine with that. You know I'm 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 personally fine with not doing videos anymore. I mean I, I stopped before Phil, but um, it's it's uh, it's definitely draining. But then you have to see how you're going to move into the industry and and do something else, and that will, that's what we decided. And I'm glad that we did. I'm very very. Yeah. Happy. You know what's interesting is my uh, <clears throat> Chris and Kim, their kids, right? They're so fascinated by YouTube because obviously, you know, when you're a kid, they, they watch YouTube all the time. I mean, they yes. watch YouTube more than they watch regular TV, right? Yes. Um, and and they, 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 they've got their favorite YouTubers and they just want to be that YouTuber so bad. Even at like these young ages of, of like, I think one, he's like eight and then like maybe 11 years old. Right. And they just want to be YouTubers. And, you yeah. know, uncle Phil got them uh, webcams because they wanted to be YouTubers. They asked me all the time, you know, show me how to create a YouTube channel. And they, they come in here and they look at that YouTube plaque back there 
and it's like it, it must to them it must glow. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, they stare at it. They're like, oh my god, we want that so bad. And it, it's interesting, you know, just to to see that dynamic from uh, from little kids. Hey, as I'm a matter of sh- fact, um, Brady. Brady wants a uh, he wants Uncle Phil to buy him an action cam. For, <sighs> I'm gonna uh, tell you, it's, you opened up a can of worms now. Hey, Amish, what's up? Phil is the OG vape model. Thank you. Um, I don't like it, Phil. I don't like seeing these, you know, because, you know, especially in, in Greece, when I talk to, you know, my friends, their kids and all that, I see this desire, you know, my Grigori's daughter, you know, she's 11, I think now, or 10 or 11. She's infatuated with TikTok and Instagram. And I see her getting on the cell phone, making videos. And, and you know, you have this, this little girl that's put, you know, on the internet, everybody can see it. And I, I'm, I know. I, and it and it puts in their head that the only way that I'm going to be successful in life is if I post a video and a, 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 a hundred thousand people watch it or like it and all that. It's right. it's bad. It's not. I mean, I'm torn, but I I don't like I don't like that. I think that there should yeah. be some parameters set in place. You know, some age restrictions or whatever you want to call it. You need to be able to to parent your kid better than that to be you know maria my old my youngest daughter she's she's not you know she she watches a bunch of stuff but she's not interested in doing that but my older daughter went through that she went through that period especially 15 16 with instagram she would do a live you know with her friends and all that you know 40 50 people came in or whatever and it's just you could tell that they they get drawn to that attention and it's not the right attention you lose that personal contact with people that that is so important you know we've lost that contact that hey let's sit down and have a cup of coffee and 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 talk and touch each other i mean i mean you know not in that way but you know what i'm saying have that physical you need as as human beings we need we've lost that completely oh completely completely i mean i i I've, i've been in i've been at barbecues where nobody's talking to each other and everybody's like just staring at their phones with their thumbs going i mean it, it's ridiculous you know in a way it's like um it's like back in the day everybody wanted to be a rock star yeah right the difference is right and not everybody could be a rock star right yeah. you, you know you can you can try but very few people are going to become a, a rock star yes, yes yes i think the difference is not even when you wanted to be a rock star, you can't just get up on stage and start performing to 10,000 people. Right. In a way now you can, right. You can, you can create that YouTube channel and you can put yourself out there. Um, and you know, maybe some people will make it and maybe some people won't, but, but I agree with you. The, 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 the personal connection, uh, between people and the way, the way, these kids get hurt when they don't get views or they oh get my hurt God, yeah, when they yeah. get a negative comment, right? It affects them in, in, in ways that like, I can't even imagine growing up T- today. Today I was at the mall with Lena before we went to go dinner, we were walking around and she was talking about this. Like she sees on the, on the shops like Aeropostale and some of the other, you know, the hip stores, they're using TikTokers as to promote their brands. So these these are you know young girls that got on TikTok, got a million followers because they were shaking their boobs or whatever they do on TikTok, and uh, and they're using them as promoters now as influencers for their products. And you see their picture plastered, all that. So for a kid, you can see you know, this, she's looking at this girl at 17, 18 years old making you know a hundred thousand dollars or whatever she's making you know to promote this brand, and it all started from TikTok. So you know everybody in their mind thinks that they can do it. And sometimes, you know, you have to sacrifice a lot and maybe some of your morals and your ethics to do that. If, and again, as a career direction, if that's the way things are going to go, like we're breaking out of mainstream advertising and we're going to be using influencers now and stuff like that, it's fine. I guess it's fine. But it, it really sends a message to the younger people. I think the older people, like I have never in 10 years of vaping, Phil, I mean, me and you have traveled all over the world. We've seen thousands and thousands of brands, thousands and thousands of e-liquids. I have, and I'm on Instagram. I'm pretty active on Instagram. I I have never looked at a picture that a woman is showing some boobage and promoting a liquid and said, I need that liquid. Now, I've said, I need those boobies. <laughs> don't, don't, get, don't get me wrong. But I've never, 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 never looked at that and said, I need to try that product because of that sexual nature of advertising that is there. I mean, 
I'm not saying that it doesn't work. Obviously, it works because they keep doing it. I don't know if it's more for branding or to get views or to get likes. But what does that translate into sales? I would like to know that figure. I don't know. Chat. God, we're going late. I know. I'm sorry. Here, let me yeah. get the chat up here. I know. I know we're going late. But I'm really, really interested to see what, what the chat has to say on this. Um, if, I mean, as far as like... Do you think that that influences you to buy a product, whether it's a sexual nature? And it goes both ways for women and men as well, too. Maybe you see a guy promoting it, but there's a few, quite a few guys that are, you know, Instagram influencers on vaping. They don't even do YouTube video. All they do is platform is the is the Instagram. So I don't know. I, I, I mean, I just, yeah, like like that. Would a woman Would a woman buy a liquid because Phil is flexing his... Uh, 29 inch biceps on camera with uh with the, uh, the watermelon peach it's i don't know i don't know it's just it's just weird uh is it me or does feel words don't match his mouth movement no it's just that it's, we use uh, special effects here this is a very high quality show buddy we just uh, we're trying to throw you off a little bit and see if you're paying attention um vaping will be dead when i'm dead says bubby yeah absolutely vaping is not dead. we're still here we're doing the smoker show today what the fuck <laughs> how is vaping dead we're not here it's a, it's a clickbait <laughs> it's cl we got you to click and come into the show with that that's what it is we're we're using new tactics um it's hard to believe it's true says angela uh strangely arousing feel says uh again a man <laughs> of course figures <laughs> of course figures but you know what? Like homicidal, it, it really. It, he says something that we said in the um, in the 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 nightclub industry for since since I was in the nightclub industry. Sex sells. Sex sells product, right? Does it sell product or does it sell a brand? Is the question? Does it actually translate into sales of the actual product, or does it just get your name out there and more people are talking about it? That's my question. Maybe that's it. Maybe it gets people to talk. Like, like I think it's, it's more the of the second factor, one, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, like you know, it, 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 that that's another thing that we use. Like, there's no there's no bad advertising, right? Sure. So if you do something, if you do something really outlandish with a label, or if you do something really childish with a label, something really shocking with a label, something really shocking with the person who's holding the brand and the label, uh, it, it just makes people talk about it. And it's that talking about it that could potentially sell the product. Yeah. Here's right? some here's some great comments right here. Um, sad thing is a trade will last longer than internet fame. That's a great comment. I talked about that with Lena today. I said, this girl is pretty now. You know, she's young and all that. What is she going to do five years from now? She dropped out of college. She's full-time TikToking. What are you going to do after TikTok, though? I mean, we, you know, you don't have a skill. You haven't learned anything. You haven't gone to college. You haven't, you know, you don't have a backup plan. Uh, what are you going to be doing? Selling Delta 8? <laughs> CBD. <laughs> oh, sorry, that was a bit low blow. No, after you're done uh, TikToking, you, you move to Florida and you retire. But yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, I don't know. I, it, that's, it's a little bit weird. It's tough when you live the TikTok -y life, says uh, Fox Papuli. Um, Hamish says it, it, uh, it cheapens the industry and it is wrong. Yeah, I mean, I agree, but it's, you see it constantly, Hamish. Everybody's doing it. Uh, hey, what's up, uh, TSV? Uh, another YouTuber. Phil, it's working. I want that juice. Of course, he's a guy and an older guy, too. So you, you're, you're, you're in with the older guy's uh, crowd. You're, you're really, really appealing to that, uh, influencing that crowd. Um, sex has been selling for generations, I guess. Yeah, I just don't know if today's market is like... You know what I I did this vape ride that that uh, that vape my noob does in Greece. He kind of knocked it off uh, James Corbin doing the you know what people get in the car and seeing. He gets in does an interview a vape interview in the car. And uh, one of the last questions is like who is the big uh, vape influencer in Greece? And I said nobody. Like nobody can make a living in Greece being a vape influencer. They might get a few bottles. I mean they might be doing it just to get a few bottles of liquid free or a few a free device or something like that. But to be to make a living out of it. I, if me as a business in Greece, right, with my stores, I don't mind paying. I don't mind paying YouTubers if they want to review my products. I don't mind paying Instagram uh, influencers if they want to promote my product. But I want to see an ROI. I want to see a return on my investment. Yeah. So w what I would like to do is like give it to an influencer, then give a code and see how many hits I get, how many sales I get from that influencer. Just taking a picture of my, uh, you know, I launched the... Um, delicious uh, fruit drops in Greece. Uh, and, you know, I, obviously we send it out to the reviewers and all that. And I see a girl posting a picture with it and she looks cute and all that. I want to know 
what sales that translates to me. I don't want to know that it, she posted a picture of it. You know what I'm saying? You know, could it be? Could it be that you don't understand it or you question it because of your age? I mean, Possibly. could that be it, right? Uh, that's I mean, why I'm asking uh, the question. Know, that's why I'm asking. But, I mean, you know, I, I think that, that every advertising means has a demographic that it targets, right? So maybe a young, sexy girl uh, targets the, 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 the young, horny guy, right? Yeah, but does the uh, young... And, and, but, but for... Well, I guess I would still be interested in the young, sexy girl. But, if I am... You know, maybe for, feel, for a different crowd, for a different demographic, they're not interested in the young, sexy girl. They want to see... They want to see that bottle with like you know fresh fruit splashing behind it. That, that's yeah. more attractive for them. So it really depends on the demographic. And really, if you want to sell your product, you kind of have to. You got to target all the demographics. Really, for me, it does. It doesn't apply. You know how horny I am, and I'm almost fifty. <laughs> so imagine, well, imagine us, me at really. twenty. Yeah, you know, <laughs> imagine me at twenty. I'd still would would I care about the product? God, I just keep but, all but, females <laughs> away from you. But, but um, uh, here I saw, I saw a good comment. Um, Peggy at E6 sources. I don't buy it because she's hot. But later on says um, that it sells the brand. Ruthless girls are good at what they do. See, that's a, that's, there's a viewpoint that that uh, we didn't take into consideration. Uh, I just want to know what to get because I don't want to smoke cigarettes anymore. Says Drayton, absolutely. It sells the brand uh, Fuzz Art in a, man in a mankini for watermelon peach. No, we don't, want we don't want to do that, buddy. Trust me. It makes people watch the video. Ruben, I see, I think you're on to something, Ruben, here. I, 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 I'm on your team here. I think it makes people watch the video and it draws traffic and it might get likes. It might get algorithms. It, 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 it becomes more visible to promote the brand, right? I agree with that. Um, you, you know, you know, something that I noticed recently, uh, here, I was looking at, uh, some, uh, fishing videos, YouTube fishing videos, um, in for, from Cape Coral. Okay. Do you know who's getting the most views? Oh, all these girls that are now out on the boats fishing in string bikinis. Yeah. They are getting the most views for fishing videos. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying people are not going to watch it. Obviously if I, I, I'm, I don't care about fishing but if it's a girl in a g-string i will watch you know what i'm saying but I, and i've watched this girl that goes and catches lobsters and stuff like that and she's like really sexy or a hot body or whatever but not but i didn't watch it for the lobster is what i'm saying <laughs> or watching her skin a fish or whatever i didn't watch it for that by the way sometimes i fish in a string bikini too just to let you, know. you still can't catch yeah. a damn thing yeah. uh hot girls uh, do get me to watch the ad not buy but watch uh, says John. You King. know what? This might work for our our viewer count. I think if I have a, a a really hot girl sitting right here, she doesn't have to do anything. Just stand up every now and then, turn around. Like if you had one right behind you, that might help our views. They could do something for our view count, especially if you wear the boxers that I got you. Yeah, you know, like every now and then we have. <laughs> uh, hey, look, I'm um, equal opportunity. Every now and then we have a male stripper for our for our female viewers, right? I think that's fair. <laughs> Green Eye no. Lady says, so Phil and Demi, are you quitting YouTube or not or moving to Patreon? I'll pay to watch you guys. No, Green Lady, we're not going anywhere. That was just a well, joke. But yeah, but wait, hold on a second. If she's going to pay to watch us, let's go. If over. you're going to pay to watch, you, we can do private shows for you. How about that? But uh, yeah. no, this is all. This was all kind of a click <laughs> clickbaity thing. We're not doing it. We, we enjoy doing this. We feel like we're contributing to the industry, and we're going to continue to do it as long as it's fun and we can. We're going to continue to do it. We're, this is not a money-making venture on YouTube for us. It's not. A Angela, um, I think you're way off with that comment. What did Angela say? Angela says, I'm thinking women don't want to be objectified uh, anymore. I don't agree with that. Mm -mm. I don't agree with I, that. I think if there's money to be, to be made, Angela, I think women will, will gladly um, a, a, a just put themselves on uh, there. I look yeah, at the I mean, success. Not, not all women, of course, not no, all women. You no, know, everybody's no, no, a little no. bit We're different. But then, the, you know, the, it's a free country, right? And and if and if a woman wants to use uh, her, her looks or her Absolutely. body Absolutely. to promote herself and her brand, then uh, why not? And if I want to pay, I want, I'll pay. But <laughs> what I'm saying, Angela, look at the success of OnlyFans, okay? That that answers your question right there. How many, And look, we understand it's a tough time. Some women want to use their body to make a living, and that's fine, or they want to go through college or whatever. The success of OnlyFans shows you that women, in fact, on the opposite in, in the last 10 years are probably more objectified now than they were before. Uh, in in out, uh, platforms like Instagram, TikTok, and OnlyFans and stuff like that. So the general progression is a girl will have an Instagram account, then she's going to make a tick to get a bunch of followers, then she makes a TikTok account, then a bunch of people going on a TikTok, and that blows up. So then the natural step is like I'm doing these, I need to get paid. 
So now I'm going to go make an OnlyFans. So they tease on Instagram and TikTok. Don't ask me how I know this. <laughs> By the way, I've done a lot of research on it. Um, um, but they tease on Instagram and TikTok, and then they say, well, if you want to see more, join my OnlyFans, right? Can so subscribe to I've, seen this with, I've seen this with vape models, Phil. I'm not going to say any names. I shouldn't say any names. I know. I know who you're talking about. But it's not one. It's, I've seen at least... Three girl. I can think of three girls right now that started as promoting vape stuff that have OnlyFans right now. Three, three, and uh, two of them are are nude, nude, and they promote on Instagram on the vape vape Instagram that they made. They promote a blurred picture of them naked, and they said, "Well, there's OnlyFans link in my bio." So again, I'm not judging it, or I'm not saying that it's bad or not. If I like, I'll pay and I'll see it. But. <laughs> For research, uh, but uh, for research, exactly. for research, of course. Uh, but uh, but uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Uh, do, do you subscribe to anybody on OnlyFans? Do I subscribe to anybody? No, I have never. Uh, I, not on OnlyFans. There's another platform that I use once, just out of curiosity. Um, just out of curiosity, I did I did subscribe to to somebody on an. Can you get a free trial on, on their no, channel? Can you? No. No, you have oh, to you have to put a credit card. Uh, mym.com it's another website. It's kind of like OnlyFans. It was this Greek girl and she used to be a classmate of mine, so it's just curiosity just got got the best of me. Uh, but anyway, uh, so uh, but I would I, I mean I'm, I'm not shamed to you know me. I don't get I mean I'm not shamed to admit it. If it's something that really piques my interest, I might. I mean, you'd be stupid to pay for it. There's so much free porn on the internet, but so but true. if you but if you want to see something that's you can't find, yeah, I would pay for it. No, Why no, not? no, no. The difference between free porn and something like OnlyFans is you feel like you have a connection to that person on OnlyFans. You followed that person, maybe you've seen them in real life, right? And and that's different. That's different from seeing somebody that you don't know. Yeah. Right, and I think that's the popularity. Of, of it. course, and it's usually the girl next door type. Like you wouldn't expect this girl. Like even with vape girls, like I followed this girl when she started, when she had like a thousand, you know, followers on Instagram. Then she has twenty thousand, right? So I saw her success, and then she goes and does that. So now you're just naturally piqued interest. You're like, oh, you know. So so yeah, I get it. And then like you wouldn't expect this girl to do it, but she's doing it uh, for whatever reason. It's fine. I, I'm again, I'm not judging. I'm just saying that that's that's. Uh, yeah. Uh, John, I, I would subscribe to um to Matt uh, S M M uh, his fan only fans page. If only if only curious, Vanessa it, was on <laughs> with it, I would. What's that? <laughs> if if him and Vanessa did an OnlyFans, I would definitely subscribe. Oh, see, to see, it. see not no, just, I, like, not I was just, just I was like thinking about Matt because I'm just wondering if his lips are the only tiny thing <laughs> on his body. That's all, I'm just curious about that. That's all. Oh uh, man, there's a lot of couples on OnlyFans too. Uh, what happened like us? <laughs> Not like us. No, it's actually like <laughs> couples, couples that are actually doing dirty things. But uh, yeah, man, right, we it's went, 1130. We it's went 1130 too long. Now. We went too long. We got we got to go. Uh, I have to make tutorial see, videos. With you the threw me off. Now, so. I'm a feminist. I support. Also. I, I have nothing against sex work. I think it's a beautiful thing. If that's what you want to do, as long as it's not forced. If that's what you want to do, I fully support it. I've paid plenty of rents in my lifetime <laughs> trust me i have all right hope hey, you I look at it show. this way it's 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 your body it's it's your your choice to do with it what you please that's, that's right. the way I let's go it, right? Clo closing thoughts mr phil go ahead those were my closing thoughts it's your body <laughs> and just do <laughs> with it what you, you please <laughs> that's what you get out no, of this show um, okay so if you're just tuning in vaping is not dead that was just a ploy to get you a little yes. clickbait right yes, vaping is not dead we're not dead uh, we're not going anywhere um, the, uh, remember we got a little contest going on. So name Phil's vape shop. Uh, don't do it here in this chat, but do it in the other uh, comments of this video and we'll go ahead and draw or, or we'll, we'll look at the, uh, the responses and we'll, we'll joke and laugh and then pick a winner and we'll send them out a nice prize pack. And, uh, and, and we're also not going to have a paid only, uh, channel. So <laughs> we're, we're not going anywhere. All right. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. We always appreciate having you here, and we appreciate the banter in the chat. And uh, no phone calls tonight, huh? Nothing. Okay. That's Not all right. one phone call. Yeah. Not one phone call. All right. Don't forget, this Thursday, 8 a.m. <laughs> on the East Coast, 8 a.m. on the East Coast. Uh, June 10th, uh, we will be live with Inikin and the marketing department to announce the release of the Cool Fire Z80. Cool Fire been around since 2011. Long, long time of uh, and series of products. 
uh, paired with, of course, the Zenith 2, the King is back. So we're going to be uh, doing a presentation of that Thursday, 8 a.m. Then later on in the afternoon, we're going to be on with uh, the uh, uh, One Shot Media uh, Paris-based uh, uh, YouTube, uh, having a little bit more fun on that as well, too. So please tune in and join us. It's very, very exciting. Next Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, me and the King will be back with a DP show. Opinions from both ends. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Like, share, and subscribe. It really helps the algorithm, and it doesn't cost you anything. It's free. Completely free. So Smash that like button. Smash it. And subscribe. Have a wonderful yeah. evening. Ha, ha, ha.